Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Schnozcast, episode 143. I will be your host this evening, Nick, along with my uh, faithful companions, uh, my co-host, uh, Corey Selesky, special guest host, James Krabby Pappas, and live from Seattle, Washington, Mr. Todd Money Dillon. As always, be sure to stream us in high-definition audio on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, Spotify, Pandora, Amazon Music, Audible, iHeartRadio, or anywhere you get your favorite podcasts. You can also follow us on social media via Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram, all at Schnozcast. Don't forget we also have an email that is uh, we're dying to get emails at, um, according to Bob, at schnozcast at gmail.com or... If you want to communicate with us in real time during the show, you can dial in or text 618-SHOCKER. And as Bob always says, make sure to give us a listen. You can feel like you're being wrapped up in a warm blanket with a bowl of soup on a blustery winter's day. The Schnozcast, comfort food for your ears. So, gentlemen, how are you? Mighty. (laughs) Mighty. (laughs) Yeah, Corey, how are you? Oh, fantastic! Oh, hey, wow! The one time I, I didn't even think about the oh hey, and you don't do it. The other time I'm like, don't fucking say <laughs> oh hey, <laughs> <laughs> oh hey. So yeah, Bob is uh, Bob is is not here this evening. He's uh, had some prior engagements um, with, I believe, a few gentlemen callers on the west side of the state. According to our screen, he was here for a second, and then he uh, he he left. <laughs> Yeah, whatever forest he's in barefoot probably doesn't have great Wi-Fi, so. It's a creeper. Yeah. How are you, Mr. Uh, Krabby? Sorry. You got a mid, you got a mid, mid bourbon. Wow, that was like half. That was a full gulp. Great. I'm having a great day. It's awesome. Both my teams won today football, and it's been awesome. Oh, I'm very excited about I'm that. I'm invited back to the schnoz guys. Oh, I know you are. I, know you. I was getting ready to explain what football was to you right for a second. You probably should. <laughs> Yeah, so but so anyways, yeah, good to be back on, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, definitely, man. Always good to see you. Um this evening we got a lot of stuff to talk about with you guys. Uh we're going to start out with some housekeeping. So, uh for this week on on housekeeping, um we have a little Easter egg set up by Mr. Bob Rankin knowing he was not going to be here. Oh, in his absence he created something. In his absence, he uh arduously searched out and was able to get us a sponsor. So, oh, can't wait for this. From this point forward, uh, this episode of the Schnozcast is sponsored by, and listen up. So, never nip your sack again. Body and below the belt grooming in a whole new ball game. Smoothmyballs.com presents this episode of the Schnozcast to you. The Turf Chopper 3.0, which has premium alloy blades and is water resistant, so you can take it in the shower and the sink. Shaving your body and below the belt should not be a task where you have to worry about nips and cuts. The Turf Chopper 3.0 features a no-scrape technology, so you never have to nip that sack again. Use the promo code SCHNOZCAST at SmoothMyBalls.com for 15% off on your purchase. If links aren't your thing, then go to SmoothMyBalls.com slash SCHNOZCAST. SmoothMyBalls.com, the perfect gear to upgrade your grooming routine and help you grab life by the balls. So that's our new sponsor. I'm, I'm, trying, that, I'm trying that code right now. Try it out. <laughs> Try it out, my friend. Hey, Drew, Drew and Mike have um, Manscaped. We have... Uh, we have the, the stepchild of Manscaped. What was it? Shave my balls? <laughs> I kept, I kept telling people... My- I kept telling people shave my balls, but it smoothed my balls. So, I, Todd, I will say, um, I I have seen this product somewhere before. Mm. Yeah, well, I'm, looking back, I'm trying to remember. It sounds like bullshit. No, I I swear to God, this is not a lie. <laughs> no, you you know what the product? It's not. That's that's what he's looking back at. It. It's uh. So this one's near and dear to my uh, scrotum, uh, in that I I know that you don't use a Norelco. Uh, razor. Yeah, when uh, when you nicked your sack and we're gonna exactly, have to I did, and, I, to and I almost that. died. No, uh, there is one of these on the counter in one of the members of the podcast, right on their their counter in their bathroom. A smooth my balls. There is a smooth my balls on the counter. Yes, and one member of the show. Yeah, 
Um, well, I wish you looking would've, around. Uh, I, I wish I you know it's. I wish you would have used the promo code because. Can we back up for a second? Yeah. Can you be more specific about counter? Oh, it's just out on the, the counter. Kitchen counter. Yeah, exactly. No, the, kitchen counter? the bathroom counter. Oh, bathroom counter. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, I thought you meant it had a counter, like <laughs> so. Not, it told you how many times you smooth your balls. It's right next to the cutting board. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Seven hundred and twenty-seven <laughs> times. I've only had it for a month. Yeah, Mister uh, Mister Bob Rinkin has one sitting right on the counter. Wow. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Um, because he didn't tell me about that when he told me about this. Well, clearly that's where the idea came from. Maybe it did. Maybe it didn't. You guys are a lot closer than I thought. I knew. Exactly. Damn. No, we're more of a, you smooth my balls and I'll smooth yours. That's how close we are. We're very close. We get really drunk first, though. Definitely going to need to talk to my representation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what'd you sign up for? Exactly. So, without further ado, if anyone doesn't have anything else for housekeeping, that is housekeeping. For housekeeping, that is housekeeping. For housekeeping, that was that, smooth, buddy. That was housekeeping. Hey, hey, since they're our sponsor, can I do a? Uh, can I cut a, a an intro for Smooth My Balls? Absolutely, you can. And I'll get some All artwork right. for Corey so he can put it up on the screen. Sweet. I like how you worked the word "cut" in there too. <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing's going to be cut. That's the exactly. whole idea. Exactly. No more lifting and cutting. Yeah. It lifts and cuts. Yeah. <laughs> It lifts and cuts. We have another version that nips and tucks. So. <laughs> Very close to Todd's something that's shaped oh, like my an upside down heart. Oh, my goodness. Uh, my Todd, I heard you had right. some booze news. I do. I do. And now it's time for booze news. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, a, this is a very interesting story. Uh, young Scandinavian teens are sticking nicotine pouches up their asses. So you guys are all familiar with snuff, right? Like the uh, school bandits and whatnot? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in, while they don't contain tobacco, uh, one user of Motherboard spoke uh, spoke to uh, describe tucking a nicotine patch inside the foreskin of his penis. Uh, young Danes are sticking nicotine pouches up their asses and inside their foreskins in a trend that's left health experts concerned and baffled, according to a Danish national broadcaster. Health experts from across Denmark, including the country's National Health Institute, confirmed the trend for DR. Uh, independently, Motherboard also found threads of Scandinavian forums where users discussed placing nicotine pouches on or up intimate body parts. Nicotine pouches are similar in Scandinavia, are, uh, are popular in Scandinavia, sorry, especially among young people. Snus, as, it, as it's called, a wet tobacco pouch that originates from Sweden, has a particularly long tradition in the subregion. So I won't read this whole article, but I can't figure out. And I, and I know that they're trying. The teens, I guess, are trying to hide it from teachers and whatnot uh, because it's illegal for them to be chewing in high school. Mm -hmm. But literally, you need a nicotine buzz so bad you're willing to stick a nicotine pouch in your ass or in your foreskin or in your cha cha so craziness. Todd, someone did show me this story the other day. And that's so it's funny that you, you came across it as well. Uh, but I will say those Swedes are pussies, man. <laughs> really? Pouches? I thought it was the Danes. <laughs> or the Danes, Wait. whoever it was, whoever from whatever European country. Dude. It's, a, straight, it's Scandinavia. It's always straight long cut in my foreskin. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay. Grizzly, buddy. Grizzly. Oh, that's grizzly. All right. <laughs> can, you, can you imagine that? If no. fall, if it falls Ma it falls no. apart too much if I try to <laughs> put it up my say, butt. No, <laughs> that, I don't want to. That that grassy tobacco halo that's around Corey's foreskin. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> who, but who? Who? <laughs> I mean, when at what point do you go? You know what? I'm gonna stick it in my butt because it's got no. you. you, you, you. <laughs> <laughs> Things I mean, have changed since I was a teen. A question. Over the decades, over the years, in many different ways. I mean, Todd, what's really not out there that you look at, and at some point you're not like, I wonder if I could get that in my butt. <laughs> uh, I don't worry about things getting into it as more, much as out of it. So I think maybe that's I'm why, just a... That's why there's doctors. <laughs> I'm with you, Todd. Exit only. Exit only. Well, and especially nicotine and... And, and I guess what was, was one of our Supreme Court justices used to booth beer? 
I, st- I still don't get that either. I mean, wh- why would you stick a beer? Yeah, you've never heard of that crab. You look, you look a little bit uh, taken aback. Like a current one. Damn. Yeah, nice yeah. Uh, Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh used they used to boof booze. They called it. So you, you, uh, they, they, it's like you know. Remember Watch, upside down text you, Hang on, dude. If you do. The show will be one less host. <laughs> well, two, two less hosts. <laughs> I'll stick around. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. No, I had no idea. It's going to be like a zoo exhibit for me for the people that don't have foreskin. So I'm going to be like, wait a second, hold on. So I, I thought it was Somebody weird. Somebody like that on the highest court in the land. Like That's National fantastic. Geographic. I, I thought it was weird when when I, when I was in high school. A guy that I went to high school with, he we he was big. We we used to like farts. We used to like things that came out of your ass, and so that was we thought that was very cool. It was and a big thing. Th- yeah. And Todd and this guy Todd that I went to school with, another Todd, not me, Todd, but he had developed a way to actually s- s- kind of fart on command because he had figured out how to suck air into his butt. Oh, oh yeah, but air, not not, too. not yep. nicotine pouches. So he was able. So we were yep. kind of constantly larding. Like uh, that's a big late eighties, nineties thing, early nineties yeah, thing. Huge. Yeah, but but then, but if someone had said, "Hey, we're gonna ha- have a case of beer shoved in everybody's ass tonight," I'd be like, "No, I'm not drinking." Uh, <laughs> Todd, see, that's where you're going wrong. It's just one beer at a time, buddy. It's not the case. How are you gonna How are you gonna light farts that are sucked in air? The methane is what catches fire. Yeah, yeah, but you you have plenty in your uh, stomach, so even though you suck in air, it's still there's still a good portion of the. Yeah, you have like twenty miles of intestines. It just doesn't suck into your anus and go into your stomach. (laughs) Yeah, but you're still pushing out. You get you got to get that air in to push out. I I think I've exhausted my interest in this. It's outstanding. (laughs) Kick off the show. It's fantastic. (laughs) On the show last night when you were on. Oh, you have no idea. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Talked about ass sucking and uh, whether there was methane in it or not. Oh, my God. All right. Corey, did you have booze news or no? After that, no, I think I'm good. Can't can't follow that, can you? (laughs) No. With what? It's a hard act to follow. Honestly. Unless you had a stuff shit in your penis hole story, then apparently you couldn't follow that. Well, Put your be, nicotine in there. That's on Sunday, so that'll be next week's podcast. When Todd said the the wet snooze pouches, yeah. I'm like, oh. You know how much that would burn? You should <laughs> see how I spit. Oh, God. All right. A um, little haunt for this October. You got it? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so... Uh, since we don't have any theme music for this, we're going to touch on something we're doing up until and through the month of October called The Haunt for this October. This one's near and dear to my heart because it's uh, in Kalamazoo. I actually stayed right down the street from it when I lived there when I was going to Western, so it was kind of cool. Uh, it's The Royal Haunt. Frank Henderson made a fortune in the uniform business and built a luxurious 25-room mansion in Kalamazoo in 1895. You can now stay in Henderson Castle, but you'd be better be prepaid for some for some company. Prepared. Prepaid. Uh, <laughs> I always you, prepay you my t- company. You, you can tell I'm a small business owner. I'm all about being paid. I need pre, you need to prepay for that? Um, you, <laughs> you're you're going to be haunted. But I'm going to ask for that money in advance. <laughs> I guarantee you'll have an experience, but I'm just going to need just that, money, need up that front. money up front. Yeah. No, these ghosts aren't free. Are the, ghosts, <laughs> the ghosts, no. no. They get a cut. They get a cut. They do, yeah. Everybody's a capitalist Sorry. nowadays. Sorry. Everybody's a capitalist, even the, even the beyond. <laughs> but you better be prepared for some company. Frank and his well-dressed wife, Mary, sometimes walk the halls. A Spanish-American war veteran is also occasionally on duty. There's even a ghost dog that may try to crawl into bed with visitors. Oh my god! We stayed in a place up uh, up north somewhere that was this like 150 year old house, and uh, it was known to be haunted. And the guy was actually buried like two blocks away, just in a field. It was a cemetery, but it was old, old, old. And they used to say that one of the things they saw all the time was a ghost dog that would show up. And every now and then it would walk in circles and it would slowly disappear from its nose to its tail. And then it would just be gone. And I'm like, I, it was like when I was still too young to make decisions if I could stay places or not. So my dad's like, you're coming. So I'm like, oh, fuck. So I had to stay in this place. Didn't get a wink of sleep. Just under the pillow the whole time. You know, it was fucking terrifying. <laughs> this place was crazy. But the the ghost hunters, uh, 
Taps, the famous TV show, they caught um, a paranormal uh, cat one time on one of the cameras. Where'd they put it in? Oh, on the camera. On the it, was one, it was one on one of the cameras. Dude, it was, I mean, it was, it was insanely legit. Like, you saw this cat like kind of materialize on camera and walk a little bit, and then like, some of it disappeared, and the rest finally just took off. I gotta tell you, I don't care if it's real, or fake, <laughs> or a ghost. I hate cats. Well, I do too. I'd be all about. The, the I'm dog, not that dog. Like, I'd be fine with. If the dog, if a ghost dog, got in bed with me, I'd oh, come here, buddy. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, especially yeah. in the winter time, if we still yeah. could feel the warmth. That would <laughs> okay, come here, ghost dog. <laughs> my, my my aunt had said that uh, they had multiple Dobermans, like when she first got married, and up and through when she had kids. They're big Doberman people. They always had like two at a time, but at this time it was like their first one named Rusty. And Rusty died, and she said she's like it was like one of the hardest things I've ever gone through. She's like it was it was horrible. She's like I never had a dog, you know, or whatever, and you know I lost this dog. And she said she woke up in the middle of the night because she felt the bed move, and she looked and Rusty was laying at the end of the bed like see through transparent. And she just said she just, like, stared at it for a second, and it just disappeared, you know. Hologram of Tupac. Show up right here. Dream. Yeah. (laughs) Dream. (laughs) Yeah, I'm saying dream. But I also had an experience like that where um, I was in, like, a lucid. I'm assuming a lucid dream because I refuse to think anything else. Um, But nothing, like, every dream I've had has been, um, you know, your. Hair dryer induced? No. Well, yeah, that'll knock me out, but uh, it is like, you know, you're you're at home, but you're really at the church you grew up going to, and but it, you know it's your house, but you're not questioning why I'm in this church. Like, there's always something that's strange, you know, and this, there's nothing strange about this. I was in my room at my mom's house. It was pitch black, night lights, everything, and I remember I felt something grab my leg, and I woke up, and I looked, and there was nothing there. I fell back asleep. And all of a sudden, I felt something grab my leg again, and I literally started getting pulled off the bed onto the floor. And I woke up again, and I was, like, halfway down the bed. And I, w- I was looking around the room, and, like, I'm like, this is not a dream. And then I felt it, like, for a third time. And I started saying every prayer under the sun. <laughs> and, you know, uh, and the spirit of Christ compels you and, you know, all this, all this other stuff. And... Uh, went away and I went right back to sleep but there was nothing weird nothing different only that I never saw anything but something was fucking grabbing me mm-hmm. and I told my aunt that so she's like oh my gosh the hairs <laughs> on my arm just stood up when you told me that I'm like yep there was there was in my mom as you know with uh with you know exorcisms and things like that my mom's like super catholic you know super christian we got crucifix in every room, you know, I'm confirmed, baptized, everything, you know. And yep. so there Me was too. nothing else different about that situation other than that. And I know, yeah, I, I know, you know, where you stand with all that. But as far as the paranormal, I, I don't know if I've, we've ever asked, are you a paranormal guy or believe in it? Uh, depends what you call paranormal. I, I believe there's demons. Okay. Um, I don't believe in ghosts or anything of that. Not even Not even like the science behind a, a spirit or like an energy? Uh, I've never seen any, any of it. I mean, I guess I would have to see it laid out in front of me. I've never seen the science. You said the science of it. I've never wait, seen wait, 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 yeah, we can talk when we're done with the show. I, I yeah. was just it, something I, I, I guess we've never. Yeah, after, de- after demons having, without a question. Oh, yeah. When, he, when Nick was talking about that, that's exactly what I thought. When he said that he compels the spirit of Christ and it went away, I've heard stories. And could tell stories. And just you know, yeah, after having like DPX and all them on, um, you know, I uh, again, I, I just didn't know where you stood because I know Bob is. Well, he's like, that's, all, that's all so stupid. And it's like, well, I mean, I get where you, but again, well, even if I thought that, I would never, I wouldn't say it that way. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not gonna no, shit. I'm not gonna shit on somebody. No, and he didn't. Yeah. He and Bob kept no. himself together for the episode. Obviously, I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm just saying. For I mean, I wouldn't make it fun of anybody just because I didn't agree. with or what have you, right. or, I, or think there. I ne- I never would have believed in any of that in any of that kind of stuff. Um, I always had you know God fearing, of course, and know that there are demons, and know that the exorcism is true. Mm-hmm. The exorcist was a based on a true story, and there's been countless you know things that mm-hmm. have happened. Um, but I literally, like in my own life, saw something. My mom was 
that I think I've told these guys this story before. My mom was going through some old photos, and my stepsister and I are the same age, and she used to have this room, uh, this living room, and the wall was painted light pink, and she had, a, like, a teal couch. And it was just a picture of her and my stepsister on the couch. So there was a lot of pink wall, like, behind her. And picture was normal. My stepsister was probably eight, and uh, she was going through old photos maybe, like, 15 years ago or something and found the photo. And she said she dropped it out of her hand as soon as she saw it, and she showed me. And behind my mom are two huge translucent blue wings, like with feathers and everything, like right behind her. And there's nothing on that wall. Uh, She took it to a photo analyst. Um, And at the end of the wings, like very lightly, you can see these white lightning bolts. And uh, she took it to like a couple photo analysts, and they said there's no double exposure. You know, this is an actual photo. Like whatever was in this photo was in it at the time that you took it. Um, And she also went to Lourdes. Uh, down in Georgia, and she had a silver crucifix, and she got home, and it was in her luggage, and it was gold. Did it stay gold? Yeah. To this day? Yeah. Wow. I took a piece of coal once. <laughs> and it was still a piece of coal. Squeezed it so hard. <laughs> so, hard. so much pressure. So hard. But it is and I used that diamond <laughs> to propose to my fiance Danielle. <laughs> took 32, coal? 30, 33 years. Coal and a pinch of grizzly. <laughs> Shoved it in his butt. Colon's oh. coal and skull. My gosh. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh my God. Fucko this. <laughs> Almost caught me off guard there. <laughs> <laughs> we missed we missed uh we missed out on your laughs a couple times ago there, Todd. Yeah, you were too busy checking on the uh, pork belly. Oh, yeah. thanks for responding to my message the other day, fuckface. You son of a bitch. Um, either way, though, yeah, you missed uh, Funko this last time. So they Nick and, and Bob imitated your laugh. And I wouldn't <laughs> say that you were missing it, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> Can you unplug Krabby's mic? Done. <laughs> so this week's Funko this. Yeah. Is uh, a special edition the Seven Eleven Slurpees, the okay pina colada to be exact. <laughs> okay, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for echoing the sentiment of every human that's heard this. Uh, I don't get it now. What don't you get, Todd? So I thought Funkos were characters or caricatures of characters, uh, but not inanimate objects, right? So is there going to be a Funko just mailbox? Funko couch. They actually, they, exactly. have, <laughs> they do have a lot of food branded stuff that are not real, real people. Funko McDonald's fries. They do have a whole McDonald's line. Oh, come on. But believe it or not, these are insanely fucking hard to find. I would take the 1980s Halloween Happy Meal, scary fries and chicken nugget and hamburger before I, I got the Funko version of that. I can't stand this bit at all. And when I listen to you guys, <laughs> I usually forward it. But I got to tell you something. That might be the most awesome thing I've ever seen right there. Wait, hold yeah, on. I, am, what? I don't care what Funko was supposed to be or whatever. When I looked up and saw that on screen, I was like, are we going to talk about that? Because that looks awesome. <laughs> I'm, I'm sold now. I might be back in on that. Or not, I was never back yet. Krabby's like, been yeah. sucking on the faux straw the whole time. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> they, they, they have a whole series of different flavors. Really? Yes, sir. That's craziness. Ah, huh, that might bring me in. You well, might. now I know it. I need to get crabby. Brought me in. <laughs> so that's so Funko there, this so, this week. So I wonder if, if they're going to do the Funko Snus Pouch. Uh, sure. I, I've actually emailed several times. <laughs> but they don't get back to me. Maybe, maybe one of these days. Todd, you live right around the corner from him. You, you need to maybe take a trip over to the I'm uh, gonna factory go, one I'm going to go pick at them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> guys, Todd's been out there all week by himself just picketing. No, no one really seems to know what the cause is. Exactly. <laughs> Todd, you know when you pick it, you're supposed to bring a sign. You don't just stand yeah, in the corner. Just there. <laughs> TD, uh, you got something to uh, do a shot with? 
I do. What uh, what libations are you drinking tonight, sir? Uh, tonight I am back on the my atomic pumpkin for uh, for October, and I'm taking the Bob thing. I'm going to drink on the weekends and then take the weeks off. You know. Oh, uh, well, that's but, not. Uh, oh, is that the Bob thing? <laughs> yeah, and then I got, and I, and for my my shot, I'm doing my I'm back to my crown apple. Okay, we had a little uh, short hiatus on on Fireball, and I. I completely actually forgot to go out today to get anything else because i knew we had so much of it so uh so i'm doing that and i the, we did the pre-show shot that we normally do to kind of amp up and uh it was uh surprising to say the yeah, least. this this will be the last night of that period so of the fireball yeah yeah it's it has to be it, i'm Dude, I have like 1.5 liters of it, and I'm like, I got to get rid of this so, so I can move on to something else. Last week we you did. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Crabby, what are you drinking tonight, buddy? I am uh, for my beer tonight, a little New Glarus Oktoberfest out of Milwaukee. And uh, my shot, I am doing a little uh, Jim Beam Black, eight year. I always uh, bring the class to the show, sir. Always. I try. Um, this is the first time you have not had a handle of Maker's Mark on the show, I believe. Yeah, I believe we're right. I think it's always been Maker's Mark. Because yeah. this, this is your what? This is your third in in person appearance or fourth? I think like my seventh. Your seventh in person? I think right around there. Has it been that many? It has. Where have you been, Corey? He doesn't. Well, apparently, not paying attention to the show. Fifteen minute production. You things. wouldn't know it when he when Krabby walked in. He was like, "Oh my God, Mike stands." <laughs> Tables. Yeah, that's, he, he's oh, like, the place looks great. He also texts text me. He's like, "What's your address?" I'm like, "You've been here like four times <laughs> to my house at least." You know the damn Apple, the damn <laughs> iPhone, oh, dude. The never, iPhone, Google download. Maps, Google Maps, please. Bob's you like, don't even know what the fuck I'm gonna say. <laughs> You're gonna say the Apple navigation's <laughs> terrible. Can we bet on it? <laughs> yeah, we Jesus we can. <laughs> you got me make a perfect husband. Getting used to having your sentences finished, so you're practicing on me. No, anytime there is a uh, the most recent iPhone di- download, the app, you know the uh, update, update, the update, yep. yeah, update, yep, it will throw shit out all the time. So it threw Nick's. I had Nick's address under his contacts, and I threw it out. So. It's okay. My old supervisor told me that once people uh, either are fired or leave their job, that he deletes them immediately out of their phone. So I get that. He's like, people are useless to me after that point, which he did. He followed up on that because I called him back, and he's like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> I don't like it. so I get I get the mentality. Uh you didn't think you were probably coming back to the show, so you no, believe no, no. me out of the phone. <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. Travis was walking out the door and he was like, oh, delete. Yeah. <laughs> we're your, done with that. Your old boss is a horrible leader. Yeah. I'm just gonna tell you. He's yeah. he's like, yeah. Oh apparently I ate too many Kalamatas last time I was here, so we're not talking again. <laughs> so uh, all seriousness aside is my sixth. Six times. Six times? Okay. Six times on the show. So yeah, so how, how many was, times here? Uh probably four. Four. Or once at Bob's and then once at the poolside. Yeah, and so so you've never seen this setup. The last time you saw this was with Nick, right? When we were, but like the the two tables on on the side. Or, uh, I can't remember, dude. No, he was no, he was here. I've been hitting the head a lot. He was he was here I, like uh, because I remember uh, after Bob, that you're Bob was really excited that it was the first time he was out since uh, COVID. It was like a month ago or a month and a half ago or something like that. You can't oh yeah, remember. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, so sir. Did, so did Krabby. Yeah, it's, which is not a surprise. <laughs> yeah, you know, so I mean, to Krabby. Dude, we, welcome we, to 14 years of football. We have, so. we have Bob on the show, and oh, which Bob did. Oh, here you go, buddy. Uh, Bob did state the other day, and I can't remember. The other this day. This is stupid. Right? I can't remember where we were at. But he claimed um, he was talking about CTE. Oh, last time we went kayaking. He's like, hey, CTE. I'm like, I'm like, I can't remember what it stands for, but I, I know what, you know. Commitment to causes. excellence. Yes, exactly. Nice. And uh, he said that he's like, oh, he's like, you know, sometimes I think, uh, you know, my memory loss could be due. He's like, you know, when, when I played football. Oh, 100%. There's more studies coming out now. No, mm-hmm. I countered with, well, Bob, uh, you played high school football? Well, I played a little bit in college. I mean, what's, what's a little bit? Well, I, I was on the team. I mean, okay, so the last time you took an actual good hit was in high school. And even then, it might not have been that big of a hit. I mean, you weren't that's doing not, it. For- that's not actually accurate. <sighs> people people Thank actually you, Todd, please. people take good hits in practice all the time. In fact, that you, you should ask a guy named Randy Kiker. 
And if I'm not correct, <laughs> if I'm, I'm correct me if I'm one, wrong, but one, Bob one. played defensive end, right? Yes. Yeah. So guess what? You're hitting your head on every play. Willie Nelson takes good hits during practice as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just don't see Bob being that. Uh, I'm sure he was on the team. I just don't think he was that involved. Still, you practice. Still, you get hit. Everybody gets hit. Absolutely. I still don't see Bob getting hit that much yeah. in practice. Except for the kickers. I don't want to get into 90 second sports just yet, but uh, yeah, yeah we're almost the there. We're almost there. I can tell you that this is what the and it doesn't matter if it's practice or a game. If you're you're in it every day, I can tell you how traumatized your body is. And I don't know if you remember me telling you this when I had COVID, but I never thought in my life I would ever feel the feeling after playing football. Like a like a day after a game or a day after you know a day after practice when you're sore, never thought I would have that feeling again. And then I had COVID and had that feeling. It just feels like you're in a car wreck when you're when you're playing in the box. We call it the box, and the box is um, where the offensive line and defensive line are. You're hitting every single play, and even if it's I, mean, practice, I, get I played I played football as well, so I, I mean, I get it. I just I don't know. I I don't think there was. Never mind. I guess we won't get it. I mean, right. There's plenty of opportunity to rip on Bob and his athletic prowess, but your, this isn't your, one your of point them. makes exactly your point makes no sense. No, I was shaking I my head. No, that Corey didn't play football. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be a hill I would die on, no matter what, just because of being there. Yeah, Corey was actually speaking of which. Corey was actually uh, talking about that uh, at the tail end of his COVID hiatus. He he was out of commission for a month, if not more, and. He zoomed with us like when he was over with, and you know looked like one of those men that were lost at sea for like three months. Mm-hmm. Like he was like a frail image of his former self. He looked like Hanks in a. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Wilson! V- very long beard, really skinny. It was very disturbing. Oh boy. And uh, and he was like, eh. he would like cough every now and then. He was like, ow, ow, and then he's like, I gotta go get a drink. And so he'd come back, and I'm like, you're drinking? He's like, yeah, it's like the first day I feel like myself. And he came back, and he's like, fuck. I'm like, what's wrong, buddy? He's like, it's just hard just to walk up the stairs. I'm like, really? He's like, I feel like I can't breathe. Mm-hmm. And, and like I would die on the hill for Bob, if anybody tried to minimize your COVID experience, I would die on the hill for you because I had, I had it. If anybody tried to minimize that, I would be like, bullshit. I'm telling you, he was hurting. However, he was whatever he was saying is legit. So, oh yeah, he he said he didn't eat, he didn't do anything. Absolutely, absolutely. You can't beat a good sickness. (laughs) Drop those pounds right away. (laughs) Right away. Finished I've been since sixth grade. Beat a good sickness. (laughs) And we see him heading in that direction. The twenty. He's going for forty. And it's ninety seconds for. Yeah, 90 Second Sports. Uh, you'd think that we already got into it, but we didn't. Um, we didn't. We so, didn't even do the shot. Yeah, that's right. Let's, <laughs> you see, you, you threw me so off. I was I, I was out of my comfort zone. So, cheers. We'll uh, raise them in the air if you got them. Uh, we talked about it certainly for long enough. Salute. 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 Ah, Machu Picchu. 90 Second Sports with Mr. Todd Vincent Oswald? No. Or Osborne? Osborne, baby. Osborne Dillon uh, is brought to you by our sponsor, and you know who that is. Stroke Mr. my Todd, balls. <laughs> Mr. <Okay>. Todd Dillon, <laughs> your 90 Second Sports stir, sir starts now. Sweet. Anybody who knows me and knows, me and knows my, my, my love of football – knows that I, my, the one thing I hate about football is kickers. And this, this is the first time probably ever that you'll hear me say bravo to Justin Tucker, or whatever his name is, from Baltimore. He kicked a 66-yard record-breaking end-of-game field goal to beat the Detroit Lions and shatter the record that st- stood for, for – for, I think it's been the last one was 60 yards by Randy McManus, I think in like five or six years ago, but that record stood for like 30 years. I think this record is going to stand for a long time. I'm, I am amazed that I'm talking about kickers in a positive light, but what an amazing clutch piece of work by the kicker from the Baltimore Ravens to kick a 66 yard game winning field goal and not choke like a bitch, like every other kicker does. 
Now, I still believe firmly that all kickers should be banished from the game, including Justin Tucker, uh, because they wreck it. Amen. (laughs) Because one good kick, amazing. I think it is a great asterisk in in, in the annals of football that someone kicked the ball 66 yards accurately uh, under pressure, uh, amazing. But I must say, there have been more games lost uh, because of kickers than any one game, than games won. Uh, and so I think football should get rid of pickers altogether because they have one job to do, and they're horrible at it. And and here's the funny thing. This they guy, field sports. goal, damn it! And... <laughs> Sorry, but you're out of time, sir. I won't, the tack, one. I won't tack on the, the penalty <laughs> minutes that, uh, beforehand. 90 Second Sports with Mr. Todd Dillon. Fantastic, sir. Your favorite segment. Oh, dude, I love it. Um, so I'm thinking. <laughs> the sigh of relief that comes out of Nick at the end of that segment every time he just. I was actually, I was actually lost in my own thoughts for a second. I looked, I looked back, and the the timer was like one grain of sand. I was wondering too. I'm looking across the table. I'm like, I don't think there's anything left in there. (laughs) And he still cut me off. Oh shit! I have more to say. Nick's like, oh, we're we're on the podcast. How are you? Done. (laughs) Smooth your balls out with. Wonder where I left my retainer in high school. (laughs) Smooth, smoothmyballs.com. If you could come up with a bit. Where Todd's doing the uh, ninety second sports, and mm-hmm. you can do the thought bubble above Nick stuff trailing it, off it, over it, in it, his it, head. It. <laughs> do you like do you like this? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just thought bubble in Nick's head. Ponies running. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he's that bored. He's thinking about ponies running. <laughs> Why is Michael Speaking Bolton of on ponies. the back of it? Sure, you know they still they still haven't named an official winner Michael to the Bolton. Kentucky Derby. <laughs> can you believe that? What'd you say, Todd? They still haven't named an official winner to the Kentucky Derby. No, oh, it's over. It's Todd, it's over. Bitches. Your segment is over. I love sports, but I hate that bit. <laughs> I hate that bit. <laughs> oh, you hate the, the horse shit? Yeah, I am going back and forth with a fucking horse. <laughs> I feel like it's one paragraph, and he's been taking a, like a, a sentence out of it for the last seven <laughs> months. <laughs> Absolutely. The horses it's are like doping. That. It's... <laughs> It's it's just the ongoing bit. It's like when you hurt your knee and you just... <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't know a show that's ever done that. <laughs> that's, a, that's the bit, if you know it. Fa- oh, Family so Guy? Good, yeah. So good, And oh. Little Pear Tree is coming in strong. <laughs> you know what's coming next time I do it. <sighs> We're going to be talking about soup and a sandwich next time. Oh, God. <laughs> so... Real quick, we'll rifle through some of the 100 question segments um, that Bob was uh, so graciously uh, let me use. So the 100 question segment, um, first thing that comes to mind, going to give you a question and just rifle off an answer. Cool? I Word. think I got it. Good? You're addressing one of us? Nope, everyone. Okay. Well, so, look at me in the eye if you're going to address we'll, me. Sir. Yeah. We'll start with Corey. Um Corey, have you ever stolen anything? Yes. Krabby. Have you ever stolen anything? Yes. Aside from women's hearts. I'm going to say yes, Todd. And and mine. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Okay. When eating a formal meal, Corey, with uh, multiple forks, do you start from the outside or inside? Outside. Krabby. Doesn't matter. No. Todd. Outside, baby. Outside it is. Yep. Me too. Uh, Corey, L.A. or New York? L.A. New York all day. Todd. Damn it. New York. If I had to choose a coast, I'd have to choose the east. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now I've never been to either. Um, what? Yeah, I've traveled That's a lot, but talk. surprisingly, some of the places that you would think people would always go if you're from the States. I have not, but I would say New York, baby, New York. Um, LA's, L.A.'s got badass stuff, too, but. New yeah, York. fuck L.A. Um, Bad traffic. <laughs> Corey, Sour Patch Kids or Swedish Fish? Swedish Fish. Swedish Fish. Todd? Sour, baby. Sour Patch Kids for me as well. Corey, Super Mario Brothers or Zelda? Super Mario Brothers. Krabby? Super Mario Brothers. Todd? Luigi. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, Super Mario for sure. 
Corey, I think we talked about this last time, but what is your thermostat set at? What's the lowest it goes? <laughs> it's your thermostat. I don't know. No, well, because if I turn it down, Danielle's just going to turn it back up. So I'm cold. Yeah, she's always. Duh. I, I, I would, I would, I would like to keep it at like a nice sixty-two. Okay, but what do you really keep it at? Right now, it's probably at seventy. Seventy. Yeah, maybe. Crabby. Do you have your heat on right now? No, God, no. Okay, this is you're talking about your AC. Yeah. Okay. Well, yep. or I mean, or just all year round. Gotcha. Uh, Sixty. Sixty. <laughs> 60 <laughs> in the winter absolutely well i guess it saves you room in the fridge for the butter and the eggs because you can just set them on the counter <laughs> we run hot and crabby runs real hot i guess so 60 oh my god tony's house i remember it was like in the winter and i went over there and he wanted to hang out in the basement holly was out of town and he's like ah I'll go down to my basement bar and dude it was i didn't look but I went. To, I had to go back up, to, and I'm not like a get cold kind of guy. Like I'd rather be cold than hot. Absolutely. And I had to go upstairs and get. I was in jeans. I had to go upstairs and get my coat. And he's like, "Oh, what are you doing?" And he likes stuff super cold. But this was, dude. I went upstairs, and it was 59 upstairs, and they didn't have the best circulation in the house. So I could only guess. That it was about forty nine in the basement. It was fucking cold. I didn't have to look at the thermostat because I could see my breath coming out. So, so we got super fucked up, and he ended up going to bed, and I passed out on the couch downstairs. And this might have been one of the times Holly was home. Yeah, she was home, and I went upstairs in my buzz drunkenness, and I'm like, I'm not too fucking proud. This is fucking freezing. I'm, I'm freezing my ass off. I have blankets. No, fuck this. You're not downstairs. So I turned it up to like 65. And so I ended up talking to him the next day. And he's like, I, I, I didn't get any sleep. I, I couldn't figure out how it got so hot in the house. I was like, <laughs> what do you mean it was hot? Well, apparently he explained that. So he doesn't know a lot. I mean, to the effect that that Holly like put in the door handles, like the new door handles because he didn't doesn't know how to that's just not his thing like anything with tools and i believe he didn't open like certain dampers in his basement and so any heat that's going into the house basically or 80 percent of it is routed to his room so it is a blast furnace in his room and the house still thinks it's like 60 so it's just running and running and running and running. He's like, dude, it was like the mouth of the devil coming out next to my bed all night. He's like, and you know, you're half asleep, so you don't have like the willpower to get up and go check the thermostat. And you don't know what's going on. He's like, so I was just, I was sweating my ass off. He's like, I only sleep like all year round with a sheet. I don't have a blanket, nothing. And I was like, dude, yeah, it was, uh, we were hanging meat in your basement. You know, it was fucking freezing. Now, you only allowed me one answer. That's what you told me, is I could just say one answer. Yep. So that's what I gave you. Yeah, so 60. There's way more to that. To the You go deeper. Go Expand on it. We so want to know. I sleep at 60. So 65 during the day, and I sleep at 60. Well, they, they do say that 65 at least should be the temperature for sleep. I know. That's the reason I do it. Because it mm-hmm. promotes uh, your body's able to drop into an REM state quicker yep. with cooler temperatures. Absolutely. Yep. Um, what, Corey? <laughs> no, I was just thinking that the, the first time I ever slept like somewhere that it was so cold that it would have been unbearable if you didn't have like a decent sleeping bag was um, up in, uh, what's the? Kalkaska. No, the Army base. Uh, Grayling. Yes, we are at Grayling. And the, it, it was the middle of November. and I've, Why I was, were you in, at Camp Grayling in the middle of November? Because that was the only time the Explorers could fund some sort of training up there. Oh, yeah. I went in the dead of summer when it was 90. Well, dude, I don't know which would have been better. But e- either way, at night, it was balls cold. Thank God I said I had a decent balls sleeping blanket. Or sleeping blanket, but uh, sleeping bag. Yeah, what do your balls feel like, man? They're exactly. fucking that cold. Smooth my balls. Smooth and hot. <laughs> Run very hot. But that night... Curled up in the sleeping bag with the frigid cold on my face. Best sleep I've ever gotten in my and, entire life. And one of the other explorers? Well, yeah. <laughs> we, don't have to, we don't have to talk exactly. about that. We need to go into survival mode. 
Exactly. If you put my snus in my butt, I'll put it in yours. Cuddle me. <laughs> I only sucked it out. Okay. <laughs> Corey was naked and afraid. I was one of the two. And let me tell you, buddy, I don't get afraid often. Okay, moving on. Uh, <laughs> How come I didn't get a chance? Yeah, what's yours, Todd? 68. 68, yeah. And mine is, I didn't go either, so if it makes you feel any better. <laughs> Man, uh, you're, you're really running this. That's, sm- that's fine. Okay. That's okay. Um, mine is, uh, like right now, it's probably 70 with air on. But 70 with air on is different than 70 with heat on. It is. And and that's completely 100%, different. 100%. I don't get it. Yeah. But it is. And the other notation you have to make in there, yeah, you might sleep with it at whatever temperature, but what uh, counteracts that effect? Well, what do you mean? air conditioning dehumidifies and right. heat. No, no. I, I'm talking about there, there's something Nick uh, Oh yeah, that's true. has to use when he goes to sleep. That doesn't matter what temperature it's going to be. He still turns on a hairdryer and has it blowing directly on his face all night long. No, that's not true. It's not all night long. It's I for the most part. I was I was telling the guys on one of the episodes that when I was in high school, when I was like or it was actually middle school slash high school, um, I used to I, I'm not a morning person whatsoever. And back when I actually had hair, like full head of hair, I would get out of the shower and I would go lay back in my bed and I would be like Okay, well, I'll just dry my hair while I lay down, and I'll kill two birds with one stone, <laughs> and that never worked. Um, Shocker! So hold on, hold on. Yeah. I want to show you something. <clears throat> yeah. This is my shocked face. <laughs> huh? Yeah. <laughs> so the the warm heat on my tired face at six fifteen in the morning instantly caused me to go into a coma, and most often than not, the blow dryer would fall out of my hands and go. Boom! Out of the ground. My dad would be like, what are you doing? And he'd be pounding on the door. So as a result, my brain like created some kind of placebo that like, oh, hair dryer means sleep. And I have, on occasion, when I get super drunk, I will fucking turn on a hair dryer. And I have to be very careful because I have to fucking... I, I have to unplug it because it'll fucking burn my sheets. Last, last, shit. last weekend after the cast, that's what I woke up to was just this noise in the... Oh no! I was, I was, I was, what I was the vac- fuck were you in Nick's bed? I was vacuuming. <laughs> oh, okay, I was like, why are you where you in Nick's bed during this time? What else would we be doing, Krabby? Friends don't you don't spoon with your friends? No. Oh, Krabby, like, oh, this might be an man. age difference thing, but Krabby, why, fuck why, no. why do we have him over again tonight? Blow dry my hair, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I keep falling asleep. <laughs> do you want to know something funny? Yes. It's the first time I've ever seen you without a hat. Oh, really? Yeah. It was funny because when you took yours off earlier, that's the first time I saw you without a hat. I always feel like you're delivering papers in the 30s. I couldn't figure it out. Extra, extra. Yeah. Extra, extra. Read all about it. We're killing somebody in the dark. Whatever. Yeah. Really. Honestly. <laughs> Snub nose under your shirt. All right. So we'll do a couple more of these. And Corey, what's what time? What's our time looking like? We, uh, we're 51 in, buddy. 51. So we got about nine more minutes. Okay. Uh, so this is ridiculous, but Corey, squirrels or llamas? Uh, squirrels. Yeah. Great. Llamas. Todd. Llama. I don't have to say llamas. I fucking hate squirrels. Yeah. They're rodents. I've, I've, I've heard that llamas can be bastards, but I fucking hate squirrels. They're, they're. Well, I'm all spit in your face. I fucking. Squirrels are fine, but I have one of the greatest llama stories ever. So. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> We're going to well, probably have to hear about that. I was going to say, well, yeah. we have nine minutes. At some point. Yeah, exactly. Are, are we going to come back to that after the break, I hope? I think so. All right. Um, we'll put a pin in that one, Craig. Yeah, because I, I don't want to put a time limit on your llama story. Uh, on a it's going to suck now. You built it up too much. <laughs> <laughs> on a scale of one to ten, Corey, uh, how much do you enjoy garlic? Nine. Nine? Yeah. Eleven. Yeah? TD? I, I'm gonna have to agree with Krabby. Eleven. I would. I would say that I'm probably the same. Um, Hard pressed not to find a Greek that would give that an eleven. Right, Todd. <laughs> if, <laughs> yeah, totally. Wow, this <laughs> Dylan Napolopoulos. This question. Bob said we were twins from the beginning. He said he couldn't wait to get us on here. So, <laughs> brother from another mother. Corey. Uh, if Jesus. If there was, uh, dude, Drew and Mike used to do butt mic all the time, so I'm not too upset. Um, 
Corey, if there was a hair in your soup at a restaurant, would you return it? No, take that shit out. Eat it. Not the hair, the soup. Take the soup out. Just, just to clarify. Cut up the hair with a fork and knife. Jimmy. So it's going back. TD. Yeah, it's going on the floor. Yeah. And I hope you're leaving that restaurant right after. As a matter of fact. Not, not because it's going on the floor, or even if you send it back, because you know what you're getting back in that soup. If Oh, it's going back. I never said I was getting it coming back to me. Okay. It's just going right. back. I, I would go as far as to say that um, <clears throat> it probably wouldn't go back, uh, but I'd be done. That'd be it. It would not be eaten. And I'd probably well, I mean, ask for the bill yeah, because if, I honestly would, that would turn my stomach that, upside down. But you said we had to answer one way or another. So but that's my that's, answer. Yeah. I, I, it would, it would not be eaten. I mean, I they, they can your answer. throw it away. Um, Corey, what's the most boring thing ever aside from our show? Some of your stories. Thanks, man. No problem. Crabby. Uncle this. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. TD, except for today, Bob. <laughs> wow. Wow. wow! Wow! TD, way to bring it full circle. <laughs> wow, Bob. What do you say about that? Uh, I'd like to discuss it for the next twenty minutes. <laughs> Drag it on longer than it needs to be. Well, uh, to stay and keep with the times, I'll say uh, 90 Second Sports. <laughs> uh, oh, well played. Well played. That sure came full circle. Uh, Corey, what size bed do you prefer versus what size bed you have? Oh, man. I, I don't know. That's a really good question because I can fall asleep anywhere, so I don't need a huge fucking bed to fall asleep in. Right, I'm the same way. Uh, I, 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 the bed we have now is perfect to me. There's some, cause something could be too big. I, That's I not think. a correct answer. Okay. Yeah, what the well, fuck see, is- now I try to explain myself. And- but you didn't answer the question. You said the bed I have now, no one lives with you, so we don't know what the bed you have now means. So you... So a qu- like a queen size. Okay, yeah. so a queen size bed is fine. Yeah. But also... Uh, Brick pavers are fine, apparently. Yeah, or a small mat that's the smaller than a twin. <laughs> Dude, if I'm exhausted, I'm falling asleep on brick pavers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I could right on this fucking floor. Absolutely. The problem that's, is now at this age, it's when I get up. Yeah. <laughs> that's what my, the issue is. My, my, I'm actually, <laughs> as disgusting as it sounds, like the, uh, um, the tile floor over here, the gross 1970s uh, asbestos tile that's I love in, it. in the basement. I, I'm actually, I just thought about it. I'm actually kind of jealous because I'm like, you know how cold that would be? That would be amazing to lay on that. It would probably oh, be yeah. freezing cold. be a great drunk floor. Yeah. Todd, how about you, buddy? Uh, I'm trying to look up right now if California King is bigger than, yeah, California King. That's the I biggest. I have a king size bed. California King is the biggest. I like giant beds, and I, unlike all of you, I can't fall asleep in, unless I'm like in a laying down on a bed, and it's tough for me. Even even though I've done some fut- futon duty at your place, Nick, uh, yeah. not good sleep. I need a big I need a big space spread out. I'll make sure to keep more of your favorites on hand when you come over next time. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> this is Todd's king, king size bed. What is this? Exactly. He, oh, um, this is care of Todd Dillon. He had it. Uh, uh, Overnight yeah. into your house. That, that pur- purple <laughs> shipment's on the way. When it comes, just put it in the basement. <laughs> he uses it once a year. Yeah, I'd Two times, baby. I flew in twice, man. You know how excited Corey well, would be? Yeah, twice. Twice. Ask, this year. ask Nick's neighbors. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be like, okay, we didn't know Nick had black friends. All right. <laughs> that was the helicopter that kept waking him up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Corey, how do you feel about cranberries? Well, First and foremost, you never asked Krabby about the bed. Oh, I'm sorry, Krabby. Uh, king, I'm sleeping a queen. Okay. And kings and queens from queens come kings. Word. I was going to say that, so good thing you did. <laughs> uh, Corey, how do you feel about cranberries? Disgusting. Yeah? Yeah. Krabby? Love them. Love cranberries. Absolutely. Okay. TD? Cranberries, good. Yeah, I'm kind of, uh, I mean, I think they're okay. Like, if I never had a cranberry for the rest of my life, I, w- it, I wouldn't lose any sleep over it. Too tart. 
Uh, <laughs> the health benefits alone are worth it. Cranberries are are one of the uh, pomegranate. Like, I could do that. Like cranberry juice is one of the few things that you get Ooh. thirstier as you drink it. Yeah, and it's yeah. a diuretic, so it makes you piss cranberry all the fucking juice time. Definitely cannot do. But I can do uh, like once in a fucking like ten year blue moon. I can do cranberry vodka and a lime. Like that's kind of refreshing every now and then. But I can't remember the last time I fucking had it. So. I got to do a cranberry once a month. And who doesn't like cranberry on good cornbread stuffing? Damn it! Got to oh. stay, stave off those UTIs, mm. right, Krabby? Yeah, uh, kidney stones. Oh, okay. Well, that yeah, makes sense. Yep, yep, yep. Kidney stones. Corey, what's our time looking like, buddy? Uh, got a couple minutes. Okay. Throw a couple more out there. Okay. So, uh, God, I don't even know why I'm asking Corey <laughs> this. Would you eat a day old taquito from Seven <laughs> Eleven? Mm. Is, is it would you or have you? What you say? <laughs> That's a great point. Well, they should both be the same answer. <laughs> is, it, is it still is it still on the roller grill? No, you purchased it and took it home. Oh no, 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 no. Yeah, because the ones on the roller grill are guaranteed at least a day old. So I yeah, mean, there's there's no way those are fresh. End of the night. Whoop! God, these aren't fresh anymore. Yeah, no, Toss once, them. Once, dude, if I if I leave the gas station with it, and for some reason I happen not to eat it, no, it's going in the garbage. But if they were like, "Hey, hun, sorry, uh, we we actually ran out last night. These these were put on at 12 a.m. yesterday." Um, it's on but, the roller grill, but they've been hot. I, fuck it, yeah. That would be okay. That's fine. Yeah. So yes, Krabby. Yes. TD. <laughs> Got to do it. Um, I don't fucking eat taquitos from 7-Eleven, but I wouldn't be opposed to a day-old one because there's so many fucking preservatives and that shit, it, it's not going to affect it. If it was sitting out at room temperature, I would say no. Um, but, yeah, if it was kept at temperature, no problem. Very specific. <laughs> Even so, still, so, it's only so going to make scientific. you stronger. If it doesn't kill I you, it makes like you we stronger. I feel like we were in a... Uh, <laughs> see, it's, it, we were... <laughs> Dude, when We're you a higher education discussion I, I, about it, so, Nick gets so serious. Dude, about when you things. when you take serve safe managerial courses, like you know about temperature and bacteria growth and everything. So I'm like, as long as it's kept at temperature, yeah, it's fine. Hundred percent. But what we've what me you and Todd have failed to realize this entire time mm-hmm. is when we started this this segment out, Nick said he's like, it's re- it's got to be the first thing that comes to mind right off the rip answer, yes or no, you know, yay or nay, and that's it, and move on. Notice how every time he's gone last and he's been like, well, I'd do this or that and elaborates on it. And none of us have picked up on it. We should just elaborate on our answers. You can if you clearly want. clearly it's okay. Listen, when you're the star of the show, that's how yeah. shit works. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right? It's going to you know be a I'm short-lived, saying? very <laughs> dim star. Come on, Nick. I know talent. Corey, uh, and I asked everybody, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just We're at that sure. point of the show now. Just making sure. <laughs> Buzz is kicking in. Corey, uh, rough estimate, how many redheads are you friends with? Six? Seven? Six. Jesus. It's like a pocket full of pennies. Krabby? Oh, redheads, what can I say? Ballpark figure five. Yeah. TD? I think I got six or, six or seven gingers in my life. Yeah, I'm probably going to say the same. Um. Okay, Corey, what's the maximum number of spritzes of cologne you would use if you were using it before it becomes too much? <laughs> Two. Two and that's it. Two and that's it. <laughs> Krabby is actually acting out the motions of eight, spritzing eight, cologne right now. Eight. Eight. Is this, wait, is this, when eight. I, is this when I get out of the bath of cologne that I'm putting more on? Or? Oh, my God. Eight. You Greeks love your... Your cologne. You must, know no, you must use cheap cologne. Fuck it. No. <laughs> oh. Eight spritzes? Eight those spritzes? Are, right are. now in the rotation is Issy Miyake and uh, Pasha Carrier. Oh, I thought it was like Stetson or something. Yeah. <laughs> right, next <laughs> I'm Jakar, like, right next to my Jakar. Jakar Noir. <laughs> <laughs> Original polo. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, absolutely. No, no bullshit. I bought my dad original bottle of polo. For Father's Day, my senior year of high school, uh-huh. it's still in the cabinet. Oh, my dad growing up. You're talking about 30 years. My dad growing up only used original green bottle polo, and it was such a strong scent. And like it just To me, it was like, oh, old men smell like this. So uh, 
my dad did not only use green polo. He actually used uh, Brute. Oh, Brute. <laughs> and, I got him, and I got him the polo. Yeah. That's so the, can, the Brute's the bottom bottom by shelf. Faberge. Dude, you're talking about 30 years ago where we broke as a joke. No, I, 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 I'm not saying it's a bad <laughs> thing. No, no, not, not in a bad way by any means. I didn't mean it in a bad way. Say no, it again. <laughs> Say it again. Yeah. Brute. By Faberge. By Brute. Faberge. Todd, how many spritzes before it's too much? Two. It's two? like two. Two. I would say th- I would say three. I do three, like probably like two on the chest, one on the wrist. See, I, uh, I just do yeah, like each side of the chest, and that's it. Both sides of the neck, under each arm, belt, the bottom of my belt, feet, belt buckle, each wrist, I belt buckle. Each God, Krabby's got each people knee. freaking checking out the midsection on a regular. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure gonna make sure you get that yeah. issue, Miyaki. Keep my, keep my knee drift open. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey! I don't want you to be discouraged as you're getting on your knees, baby. <laughs> Got to smell that uh, brute. It still smells exactly. good down there. Exactly. <laughs> and we'll we'll end it off with. Uh, can, can I ask one? Yeah. Before we end it off. Yep. Go ahead. I, cheapest cologne you ever wore, Nick? Go. Cheapest cologne I've ever worn. Um, I don't even I don't know the price on it, but the the cheapest that I feel like smelling was probably Jupe. Jupe. Okay. Jupe. Back in the day. <laughs> would, would you consider Jupe. Axe like a, a no. che- like, oh, so like an actual cologne? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, oh cologne or aftershave? Probably Corey's Duke Cannon Solid Cologne. That's pretty that's cheap. actually that's really good shit. That's pretty cheap. You have the exact. You have seven <laughs> tins of it upstairs. I, it's still cheap, <laughs> dude. I have a bottle of cologne upstairs that's like a hundred dollars for like three ounces. That's like fifteen dollars for a brick. 24 for a brick, but it's also it's it smells amazing. Yeah, Cheapest clone, Corey. Fuck, man, that's a good question. I uh, Adidas Kenneth, Kenneth Cole Black, Todd Ooh, Adidas. Ooh, Adidas. Oh, fuck, how I forget. Yeah, I did have Adidas. That's a that's how, how cheap was that, though? It was pretty cheap. Adidas was super cheap. Maybe, they they maybe, sold it at like Kohl's. I'll and say shits. maybe like 15 bucks for the bottle. Okay, Todd. Well, because my answer is going to be Michael Kors, because for whatever reason, Mary likes it, but I, that's like cheap cologne to me. I don't know how much it costs, but it's horrible. Gotcha, yeah. So mine would be your car. Yeah, your car and the Adidas was stepping up. Uh, d- dude, I, I can't believe that. Your car's in the running. I had I had your car. I think everybody had your car. Yeah. Yeah, or like Curve. Never did the Curve. Oh, I did curve way back in the day. That's the quote of the night so far, Corey. I never did the curve. I never did the curve. I just have one. I just put grizzly in my butt. With that being said, uh, we're going to go ahead and take a 15-minute break. Make sure uh, you come back and see us. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to close out anything. And if you're listening to us in the future, then uh, you won't have to worry about this. We'll be right back. Gentlemen, welcome back to the Schnozcast for the second half, the back half of episode 143. I'm here with uh, my buddies, Mr. Corey Seleski, Mr. Todd Dillon, and Mr. Jimmy Krabby Pappas as our special guest tonight. Gentlemen, again, thank you for joining us, and if you're still sticking with us uh, live, we appreciate that. If you've gotten this far coming back to us um, in the future, we appreciate that as well. So uh, we're taking a look now. Um, we're going to get into a little bit of gentleman's agreement. And 
I don't believe we have any music for that. Hey, yet, Nick. Todd. Nick, I know. Hey, Nick, before we get into that, though, can yeah. I can I interject something? Cause, sure, of course. So I, I didn't share this story earlier, but this is the perfect time to bring it up. Actually, at the break, I needed to run downstairs and, uh, and uh, make an adjustment. So today I had the pleasure of uh, smoking uh, a pork belly that I'd been uh, uh, brining and curing for the last 10 days. A pork belly uh, or pork butt? Pork belly. Oh, belly. So okay. I made my own. Ba- I'm making my own bacon. Uh, so I cu- I cured it, and uh, actually, uh, and then I let it cure. So today was day ten. I pulled it out and I smoked it at about 200 degrees uh, with some hickory and a little bit of uh, uh, bourbon barrel uh, oak uh, that I that I've that I've acquired, and uh, so I was able to uh, let that smoke until I got the internal temperature and I put that away. But what the, when I got it ready to prep for, to cook tomorrow, I cut off the, it was a skin on pork belly. And so I, uh, had that, I cut that skin off before I stored it for tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And I threw that skin on my, uh, egg, uh, to make a little bit of crackling. Ooh. Uh, mm. and I must say it was very, very difficult for me to come back. Uh, <laughs> <to the podcast. laughs> I'm not sure I can come back. I have my eyes closed because I'm like fantasizing right now because there's so much love of my love language that you're speaking right now. <laughs> and, <laughs> and speaking of which, not to further put off gentlemen's agreement, but no, we got time. Todd, I, I texted yes. you the other night asking for an update on the pork I belly, see- and I, I never got anything. I didn't see it. I, then I apologize. I'll give you an update. So there is, and for everyone's. The, I actually had two videos. There's a video where I uh, yeah. learned how to make my own bacon with yeah. pork belly, and uh, that is what I'm completing. I'll be completing the the end of that tomorrow when I actually fry up that bacon. But it looks and smells out of control, and the crackling is amazing. Uh, but there was another video where uh, the men with the pot, I believe it's the men with the pots, will give them their due. You can find them on Instagram. Uh, they do. Vi- this guy does videos. Obviously, he was a chef, and he's got cool-ass knives and pots. Uh, but he did a recipe where he, he uh, basically cut up some onions and garlic, did them on a pot over an open fire in the woods, uh, and then put a seasoned pork belly on top of that, and then made some uh, what looked like cornbread without any corn meal or corn ingredients at all, uh, with a nice sauce and everything. So he had crispy pork belly that was cooked on an open fire in, in cast iron pots. Uh, that's the, the, the Reader's Digest version of the video. Men, men with the men with the pot, uh, you can look it up. But so, I've tried to mimic that using the ag, and I screwed up. I'm gonna, I gave, I'm giving oh, myself, a, I'm God. giving my, well, hear me, so hear me out. I'm giving myself a solid D, uh, mainly because I was, I was so ner- I'm not a baker at all, but I successfully made uh, one of the most amazing bread products ever on my ag, uh, leveraging what he did because he didn't give any. He didn't share any uh, measurements at all, so I had. I'm not a baker, so I had to guess like how much flour, how much baking powder, mm-hmm. how much salt, and all that other stuff. So it was all guesses and and all the other stuff in there. Brown sugar, honey, uh, it was all guesses. And the thing that I got lulled into when he shot the video, the way that they produced it, the bread came out right when the pork belly was done, uh, and I didn't. I didn't do that, even though I leveraged the same a single egg to do it. And I essentially overcooked the pork belly. And so I give myself a solid D. That said, it tasted absolutely amazing. But I'm going to do it again and just get the pork belly off early because it was super crispy, but I overdid it a little bit. Uh, it tasted fabulous. Uh, the garlic and red onion and, with oil in a, in a cast iron skillet. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, do it again. Uh, it, ter- it, it turned out I ate it all. I ate every bit of the uh, the, the pork belly uh, to, to answer your question, Corey. And Mary loved the bread juice I, I thought it was cornbread and this and the sauce oh my god is it amazing so, so. yeah Corey, you had a question oh it's, well so okay so I'm, I'm glad it came out came out great but what i was going to say too crabby hasn't seen the video yet so when we're done with the cast i do it remind me to show you that video okay, absolutely oh dude because i feel like this portion of the show should be called the climax portion if it, if it, <laughs> <laughs> He was, actually, corner. he was he was clu- he was clutching his chest like Fred Sanford the whole oh. time you were talking. So, I actually was first was envisioning, and then I moved into the tear part. Where I was just tearing. <laughs> up. I was like, if the video, so emotional about it. If the video wasn't so long, I I we could put it up here right now and play it. But 
I, I don't. It's a yeah, it's a long it's a long video, and, but it's worth it's I'll worth the it, watch. I'll see it after. Todd, are you seeing the egg? Are you talking about the green egg? The yeah, egg I used cooking? so he, he did his. No, he used cast iron skillets over an open flame. I mimicked it using my big green egg. The green egg is the greatest thing ever. That's why I have three. I'm telling you, brother. I am telling you. This Greek brother here, who has cooked lamb every which way possible, mm-hmm. the greatest lamb I ever had came off that green egg. And it was at a demonstration at a place that was by my house, you know? Really? And they were doing it on a Saturday, and I was just unexpected. I, I've yet to have amazing. anything off of, a, of a, a big green egg, but, I mean, the science behind it that I understand makes perfect sense, yeah. you know? I mean, it costs a lot, but it's worth it. I mean, if it's going to... When you're they're warranted forever. Long, right. And you're gonna they're have warranted it. forever. They work totally. great. Mm-hmm. Well, you can and, and they're versatile, right? You can buy a, a high-end smoker. And mm-hmm. smoke all manner of good things, and maybe smoke better than the egg. Like if, again, an offset long barrel smoker, that's badass. But guess what? You're not going to get it up to 700 degrees to do a steak. And an egg, an egg does everything really, really, really good. Right, right, right. And I have because I have a long barrel smoker or smoker. That's what I use. Um, and I love it. I mean, it's great. I'm not you know I'm not going to shit on it. It's fantastic. But the egg, um, just it's amazing. Just how it keeps the the uh, Sucks or, or uh, seals all the flavor. In. Seals all the flavor. You know, because oh, you're not you're not in and out. It's it's very yeah. accurate. Temp- it, he keeps the temperature perfect. Like it's so said, I said, the the I think the the biggest thing I remember the first person who tipped me to the big, big green egg. Uh, shout out to my buddy Freddie Croson. Uh, but he told me he goes once you have chicken off a big green egg, you'll not, chicken elsewhere will uh, will cease to be. On par. Dude, are you serious? I've never had that. And the bird is my favorite thing. <laughs> the bird? The bird is, it, it, it is. Yep. I'm kind of a, a weird little bit of yard bird, bird. smoker yeah. person. The bird is my favorite, chicken and, and turkey. Well, that whole, that whole thing when you're talk, talking about with the, the it keep forcing the juices in because you're not in and out of the grill. Yeah. Uh, I just did, I did some split chicken breasts and some uh, Caribbean jerk wings as well since I had, had it fired up tonight. Pull those off just before the cast. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, awesome tool. The video is awesome. I actually ended up buying a knife, and Corey had a dis- Corey and I had a dispute over whether my <laughs> yes, knife we did. <laughs> was, was the same. But I ended up buying the, the video. Is so cool, Krabby. I ended up I within wa- watching the video. I watched it three times, and I'm like, I must have that knife. I've now. I've sent I've sent it to at least <laughs> 26 people. Todd, yes, specific. Todd, have you ever been formally taught how to break down a chicken? Uh no. Do you know what the oyster on a chicken is? I would assume it's, it's a gizzard of the liver, no, right? No, 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 no. It's the hardest thing to find on a chicken, Todd. No, it's not. It's just it's a way to cut it. Um and I'll I'll at one point in time I'll show you. It's it's Okay. If if you properly uh yeah, I'll show you as well. If you properly uh What about me? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like, I don't know. Discriminating like, against like, Greek lives matter too. De- debone <laughs> if you, like a whole chicken, debone a whole chicken. There's yeah. a part on the deltoid on the back. Okay. That is the most tender part of the chicken, and it's it's about the size of an oyster. And most ah, just, I know, I know what you're talking. Those little those little divots there. Yeah, and there's a way, yeah, there's a way to cut it and fillet it that you, um, when you cut it off, when you cut the leg off, you include the oyster. And in a lot of French dishes, like it's not done correctly unless you include that piece when you, ah. when you cut off that leg. So yeah, most just just hit it with with a sharp knife and put a lot of pressure on it and then you're losing like the best part of the chicken. So I found it pretty interesting. I never knew. Anything Absolutely. Cause it's, it's funny when I'm actually deep when I, when I ever debone my turkeys or my chickens, when I get to, cause I spatchcock a lot, but when I get to the debone phase, uh, I search that I search those oysters out. Cause those are badass pieces of meat. Spatch and by the, by, awesome, the way, by the way, yep. crabby, you gotta make the trip out with the rest of the crew. Because if you've had the, I make the best lamb chops, in the history of the universe, I'm a egg no, no, regular. Man, that, would be, that would be tough, man. I do. I feel you. I'm sure it's good. But nope. You're ta- again, you're talking to I'm a t- great brother. I, you man. know how I grade? I gave myself, my, I freaking think my, you my know, pork belly was you damn good. Grade, I gave myself yeah. a D. Yeah. I make, I make uh, lamb chops that would win awards. All right, dude. That, that, that'd be awesome. Yeah, that, that would be awesome. Not not to cut you guys short on this, uh, yeah. but my sister's here and she's waiting to do a shot with us real quick before she takes off. All so, right. an off-camera Ta- guest and uh, recently, which sister, Callie? Recently, Callie, asked, what's up? 
Recent, Todd, Todd says hello. Recent, she can't hear you. She doesn't have headphones on. Recently also engaged. Um, yes. So congratulations. Congrats. Congratulations. Awesome. Yeah. Nostrovia and salute. Salute. Good health and prosperity to Callie and to her future husband, Dylan. Cheers. Machu Picchu. <laughs> Machu Picchu. Yep. You guys continue on for one second. I think we'll make it. So, yeah, TD, that... Dude, yeah, uh, the spatchcock or spatchcock chicken, um, great way. I've seen it a million times. Never actually heard it because I, I didn't go to culinary school. But obviously, my uncle is being his sous chef. Like you know, he's trying to impose his sage wisdom as much as he can. And uh, Bob had brought it up. I asked asked about it, and when when I saw exactly what it was, I'm like, oh yeah, it's uh. It's a chicken ran over with a car, basically. You know, yeah. you, you cut it in a way to where it's flattened. You do it in a Dutch oven, or oh, you know, well, there's oven. actually another reason for it. I, I'll give you, I, I'll give you another reason why you spatchcock. So I had a, one of my uh, old coworkers, one of my dear friends, lives out here in Seattle with me. Uh, mm-hmm. He actually took the this COVID uh, experience and really is he's he's always had chickens for eggs and some and producing meat for he and his wife. But the, he took it on to mm-hmm. actually kind of expand his business and make make uh, and grow poultry of his own and he actually brought over these like almost 11 pound chickens uh that he's like oh, they're fabulous will you cook one for us and i'm like yeah and it was su- such a big bird uh, even on the egg it would have taken me forever to do it if i hadn't spatchcocked it so i was able to i spatchcocked it laid it flat and i was still able to cook it to it's super juicy not too fast uh, because you, again, you can actually get more heat and circulate it on the surface area of the chicken by doing it that way. So and evenly as well. So spatchcocking, uh, I, I, if it's a big bird, I do it. If, if I have tons of time I, and just for giggles, I like to do beer can chickens every now and again. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I spatchcock quite a bit I've, and I've spatchcock turkeys as well. Just so, just Corey's so you know, Todd. So excited that we're saying this so many times. <laughs> no, I, I am in, in, in post, I'm going to have to get a counter going on how many times you just said spatchcock. Spatchcock. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna say there's not there's not many uh, there's not many situations that you can use that word, and so when you can, you, you can, overdo it. For, 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 I'm gonna for, go even further and say there's not too many situations culinary wise that you can say cock and oyster. Uh, <laughs> right. uh, Hank, but but I will say this just just real quick to explain to everybody, um, it's it's basically the way of filleting a chicken um, to where it's flattened out like you would tan a hide. Um, and that's that's kind of the way to look at it, <laughs> not not smacking Smack your children. <laughs> but anyhow, Corey, I'm sorry. What were you gonna say? Oh, so you work with your your uncle Mike, right? And I'm gonna leave it to you to definitely say that crabby statement is incorrect uh, as to how many times in the culinary world you hear cock. Because I'm assuming with working with your uncle Mike, cock is said in the kitchen a lot throughout the day. Uh, for me, different Nick, reasons. Like, yeah. uh, hold up there. Yeah. That wasn't my statement. What was your statement, sir? I've never heard cock and oyster said so many times in a culinary That space. is what he said. <laughs> but. Eh, it's uncomfortable. But we, we definitely don't say, uh, we, we the don't. The oyster comes from the cock? You no. You say that, No, right? and we don't gender the, Only uh, we don't, does, we don't though. gender the chickens. Oh, this is a fantastic looking cock. <laughs> this is a great looking hen. No, we just say it's you let, chicken. Let them pick their own pronouns. <laughs> yeah, there's no genitals when you get a when you get a chicken. So, Todd, let me ask you: Do you brine your bird? I do. Yeah, I, you, I did. So, 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 I, and I, 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 and I will say, I have to caveat it. I do probably seventy five percent of the time. Tonight, I actually, since I, since I was, my main intent was to smoke that bacon. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that it was like a casual. I'm like, ooh, smoked wings and smoked chicken breasts. <laughs> So uh, I didn't, I didn't brine those. They were an afterthought. But normally, if I was planning chicken for dinner this weekend, hell yeah, a two day brine, yeah. Best best way to do chicken or or duck or goose, um, and Gordon and you know my like I've told you guys many times. My uncle went to school with Gordon. They have a lot of the same training, um, but always fat side. But your down. uncle's cooler, right? <laughs> yeah. Good. Uh, I haven't met Gordon, so I don't know. But I, I do. I do. What I see on always. What'd you say? Always fat side up. I hope your uncle. No, 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 no. Fat side down. Um, always fat side down because um, you want to render that fat, render it down as much as possible because it's 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 a layer 
that you have in between that and hopefully you're using cast iron, um, some sort of Dutch oven, something like that, uh, to make it. But you want to get it super, super crispy and then transfer it to an oven or, you know, some sort of grill oven like an egg and yep. finish yep. finish it off. And then you got that delightfully crispy skin. You can score it, you know, and they do say with duck um, – it, it should never be less than like half an inch thick, you know, because you're doing it an injustice if you slice it after that. An but injustice. You're doing the duck an injustice if you're you're searing the skin in a way. And it's just such a wonderful meat that you want to cut it like you would cut almost like a tenderloin, like a steak, you know. Totally, duck is awesome. Yeah, yeah it's fantastic. If, if I do a mean duck, I do a mean duck for the holidays, and in fact, the funny bit is. My two appetizers for uh, the holidays are pork belly and duck, and as you know, and then there's a point when I always think that I've Can cooked I my pork belly a bit. Christmas time, it, you're always welcome. Oh uh, there's a point when I when I in my mind I'm like I'm cooking the pork belly too long, but I normally other than this last time I get it right. But norm when I when I first think that I've cooked it a little bit too long, mm -hmm. I actually set that pork belly on top of the duck that's also on my egg and let that fat render over on it, and that actually gives me a double crisp. So that that freaking skin on that duck uh, is so perfectly crispy, and it's got that again an extra little kick of salt because I, I love to use seven spice on my duck, uh, uh -huh. but that bacon salt on it, good stuff. So Mike Mike has shown me a couple of times how to do duck confit, and oh man, I had never had it before. Oh my gosh, it's easy, okay? It's it's and it's fantastic. So I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you know. Crabby's um, hitting the table now. To, to give it. <laughs> <laughs> to, to give you an idea of, um, like, what's the difference between, um, um, like, a brisket and a corned beef? And you're like, well, they clearly taste different, and corned beef. Well, there's, it's just a season. It's the pre, it's all the pre-work that makes it. It's all, yeah, different. all the prep. And corned yep. beef looks different. You know, it's it's got that pinkish hue it's to it. Yep, yep, yep. So the way they do that. It's all with, the coriander. Well, no, that, I mean, the little, the tiny, you're like, okay, this tiny little spice pack isn't making this five pound. Corn no, it's, beef. Cu it's cured for freaking probably, Tasting I don't know how many like days, this. but so they, they definitely, they use a pink curing salt, Prague spice. That's, yep. This pink curing salt is specifically for things like that. So they use it in confit and they use it in corned beef. And that's what gives corned beef that pinkish hue. And that's what gives confit the same color, and it's fucking delicious, dude. I so mean, you, could, and, you can absolutely but, overdo it. By uh, the way, you, it's the same thing I use for so to cure my bacon. My I took the pork belly. If you look at the recipe, so it's mm. mostly mostly regular kosher salt. I got some of the prog spice, so the 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 nit, uh, nit, nitrite, uh, sodium nitrite, and then uh, and a little bit of sugar. And that is your curing agent, and that so yeah, you have that in. So my bacon, it's smoked and it's still beautifully pink. So I expect it looks very close to what I would see in a store as far as color uh, when I slice it tomorrow. So you haven't had the bacon yet, right? I will have it fried tomorrow, but I have had the I had I had a couple of pieces of the crackling that I cre it created, so it worked. <laughs> Release the crackling, I love it. So there's there's a place I actually have my freezer right now, and we'll we'll move on after this, but. I uh, have in my freezer right now that Corey and Bob and I stopped on the way up to the North Country to my cabin, uh, like four hours, three and a half hours away. And it's a farm market, just a very, very small little butcher farm market um, called All Words. And they have had my whole life the best, the best bacon we've ever known. We've always called it Up North Bacon. And to the effect that my dad's been buying it, First of all, it's super thick cut, locally sourced uh, farm pigs, you know, in the area. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, really big, big, thick cuts of bacon. And they smoke everything in-house. And this bacon is just so fantastic. So my dad buys it and shrink wraps it, and we have it for Christmas morning, um, along with, like, fried eggs, poached eggs, things like that. And this past year I came up with a um, morels. Uh, morel scrambled eggs to add to that. So nice little breakfast that we do on Christmas. But nice. aside from that, they do a bacon burger where they hand grind grass-fed beef that they have locally sourced in Michigan 
with their smoked bacon. Um, so it's a 50 50 <laughs> and it is just fantastic. It is. But I've, I've, I've never left my family for a holiday. But yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was gonna say, I was, I was actually shocked. And, and Todd, I can tell you this personally that Krabby would even mutter those words because I remember there was a March madness trip. Oh yeah. That you did not attend because it was over Easter. Yep. I've had March Madness trips where I have not attended because it was over Easter. It just didn't work out. And I've had other ones where I came in for the first part of it and got my ass out of there. So I was home for Easter Sunday. Yep. Yeah. So yep. for, for, for Krabby to say that he'd mm. prefer to come out and spend Christmas at the <laughs> Dillon household, uh, that's a huge compliment without him even trying any of the food. I don't know if I said preferred or well, that I was drawn. Yeah. Oh, you should, well, actually, right, the proof, enough, sorry. Hey, the, <laughs> hey, the proof is in the pudding. My, the, the, here, I'm going to put it out there. The The invitation is always there. And actually, like I said, I really uh, – Thanksgiving is where I actually I show off a bit, mainly because uh, up until COVID, I've always had the lucky responsibility and opportunity to meet and work with people who've never experienced Thanksgiving. And so I let my hair down uh, uh, figuratively uh, oh, during okay, Thanksgiving. Good. Uh, <laughs> so that, uh, people who've never experienced it, I, I've had, it's been awesome. I've had people every year, probably for the last 10, 12 years who've never celebrated an American Thanksgiving. And so I do duck, pork belly, turkey. I do two, t- two types of turkey. Some, some years I've done three turkeys. Uh, wow. people have never had a barbecued turkey on the egg. I actually, now I do one egg turkey, one deep fried turkey. And I, if, and if I get around to it, well, I'll, I'll, if I get around to it, I'll do a goose, but I always do at least one one duck and a pork belly. So, and that isn't even talking about the stuffing or the sides and and my uh, my uh, pork shank uh, greens are pretty to die for as well. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, sounds, I make good macaroni fantastic. and cheese too. <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds fantastic. I used, I used to do uh, smoked chickens on my smoker, and oh, yeah. I made the mistake of bringing one into work one time uh, when I worked in Detroit. And they were like, "Hey, how, how much are you gonna do one of those for me? How, how much? How much are you gonna charge?" <laughs> so I was charging, I think thirty bucks, because of the time frame. You know, it took like twelve hours or whatever, and you know, getting up in the middle of the night and checking on it and shit like that. So I was doing thirty bucks for you know a seven dollar chicken. Dude, Dude that that's was the beauty part of it. And no, it wasn't. <laughs> it was not a mistake. That was using your talent to create joy in the world. And man. people were exactly. like, "Yes, yeah. yes." That's what I'm saying, dude. That's that's being a steward of your talent. By the way, uh, uh, Krabby gave me a Southern Tier Brewing Company Pumpkin Nitro, new apparently this year, an Imperial Pumpkin Ale, and it's fantastic. It's very, very light on the pumpkin side. Um, it has a creamy froth because of the widget, the nitro widget on the inside, and it's got like a, an undertone of nutmeg. It's it's pretty fantastic. That's what's nice about it is it's not sweet. You know what and, I mean? It's not like... And the cool thing is it's... Uh, uh, Miller Lite is about 4.5% alcohol, and this is uh, 8.6. Yeah. <laughs> so. I forgot to warn you about yeah, that. It's, thanks. It's, it's not the F, it's not F around. With, with that with that intro, I, I have to say I hate and have always hated all things pumpkin. Always. Nice. Don't like pumpkin anything. But and, and it's funny you say that. This year, New Belgium Brewing made an, a, a beer called Atomic Pumpkin, and Mary found it in Michigan. So uh, this is... In my mind, because I have to, I will try the one that you just had. Because now I'm like, hey, I can't say I hate all things pumpkin because this beer by New Belgium, the Atomic Pumpkin, it has the best spice notes while you're drinking it. And what I love is it's got a cayenne pepper kick uh, at the end, at the finish that's yeah. not obnoxious, but it's like, man, I got a little bit. Of, I, as a guy who loves spice, this is a badass beer, uh, and they're only going to have it for a couple weeks a year. So if you so I want to plug mine as well. The yeah. again, I normally hate pumpkin things. I do sweet potato things. Dude, I don't I won't eat like pumpkin hors d'oeuvres. I won't eat pumpkin pie. I'm not gonna eat pumpkin fucking ice cream. But <laughs> you know, like a pumpkin spice uh black coffee, definitely do that if it's a good coffee. And a, a, a really good pumpkin beer, not some bullshit like artificial flavor. Mm-hmm. Like the ones that say like we use real pumpkin puree in the fermentation, like, yeah, I'll do that. Uh, but it's sparingly. It's it's something I want to have one of. 
Uh, I'm not going to drink it all night because that I would fucking vomit. But, uh, but yeah, it's kind of something I've gotten into in the last couple of years as well. I'm sorry, Corey. No, I, I, I was waiting for you guys. Todd, so Todd sent me the video, and Todd, uh, I'm, we're going to put this up on the screen here. So go ahead and uh, tee up what uh, what you sent over and explain what we're about to see. Oh, so I so I sent you. Yeah, I did 30 seconds. I've been I've been working to actually video some of the stuff I do on as far as cooking. My sister's been encouraging me to share more of my experiences, which is actually funny. When I tried to mimic the video from the men with pots, uh, I realized I am a shitty. I got a cool ass knife, but I'm a shitty onion slicer. And cutting the garlic is harder than I thought. So the setup is, here's my pork belly on my green egg. All right. And uh, here we go. Dude, that's, I mean, I know what you were trying to recreate because I've, I've seen the video, but that still looks damn good. It's, it's like a religious experience. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but that's the bacon. Muslim that's gonna be, that They're bacon. That Jewish. bacon is gonna. That bacon is gonna be awesome. That was smoking like crazy. Like I said, the, I'm super excited because I found I stumbled upon those oak the bourbon barrel. Uh, so the real uh, Kentucky bourbon uh, barrels that have been uh, that the, the, they were using to age uh, bourbon or as uh, oak. And so I did that with the hickory. So it's I got enough. And the bacon, like my kitchen, when I let it come to room temp, my kitchen, I'm like, oh my god, it smells like heaven in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude that that looks absolutely fantastic yeah, totally totally hey let me ask you getting back to the bird and you said you brine have you ever done it where you just let it uh soak in apple cider vinegar and then hit it with a real good dry rub i haven't done just an apple cider vinegar i, I i'm i will give it a go because i've done i've done things half and half i've actually and i've done i've done a cherry coke overnight brine oh uh, with chicken I yeah I could see and that. ribs yeah yeah i could see that for sure yeah the apple cider vinegar is nice because of the vinegar it really tenderizes it you know yeah yeah and <clears throat> gives it that's like pickle apple. juice mm-hmm. and it gives it a good underlying flavor and then hit it i like my favorite is to do it with the apple cider vinegar and then hit it hard with a dry rub i mean just to yeah. really just cake the dry uh, rub on you know what i mean well that's that's for all i i don't add sauce to any of my chicken uh anymore I, and i no occasionally way. do the ribs because i want you to taste the meat and i want you to taste the, the spices that i've labored on look it's funny if i use it I, and i i won't uh malcolm reed is one of the products i've suggested for people before when i use his spices they're fabulous, but I'm not afraid to throw sauce on it because I didn't slave over actually putting the rub together. So uh, I will sauce his stuff, but his stuff stands on its own. Dude, I, I think we, we just found a new podcast for just the four of us. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Bob. All, happens all the time. That's, Bob's out Wait, of this one. Where are you going to second one going? Dude, uh, I, dude. This I, should be I, a segment. I, I, Oh, a segment again. This is an entire podcast, I'm, not a segment. I feel like it's going to be an entire podcast. Yeah. Dude, I'm, I'm willing to. I'm willing to step away from uh, from uh, 90 second sports. Maybe if we do a food one. Oh, you just <laughs> you just spoke to Nick like you wouldn't believe Todd. Because mm -hmm. I know I'll get more than 90 seconds talking about food all the fucking time. I'll get more than 90 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, moving it along. We're gonna uh, head on on to uh, gentlemen's agreement uh, for this week. We, we got music for that, right? No, we don't. I thought we did. Nope. You don't like that one, huh? Oh, we do. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, we do. Is it 8.9% alcohol kicking in? <laughs> no, I. this is not something we did. This is something I said that Bob cut out. So, um, yeah. No, it's the MF and Gentleman's Agreement. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Done. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> so uh, I, I know we were, we, we music. <laughs> this, I don't know if we really call it music, but uh, we had we had a audio introduction, <laughs> so, which was fantastic. I'm not gonna lie, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I've heard a lot of shit, but I gotta say that was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it, well, it is, isn't it? <laughs> So uh, we're gonna we're gonna switch things up. Um, I I feel like Todd never goes first. And okay. Todd, I want you to go first. You had Treme, yeah. right? Treme. And I'm gonna give you guys a new grade. Oh boy, who gave it to you, Todd? But uh, it was given to me by Krabby. 
There you he was go. he was struggling over this. I can't give it a, a, a an A through E uh, grade, uh, and so I'm giving it a pass because I'm going to continue watching it. I th- it is it is very interesting to me, and I think two episodes isn't enough for you to actually get it. Plus, even though they're speaking English, it's fucking hard to understand what the fuck they're saying and to actually <laughs> re- recollect what it is. But I'm interested in it, and and also the cast is top notch because it's a bunch of people from the wire uh and john goodman i mean it's it's people who know who don't take crap projects for the most part uh and so i'm super intrigued i don't know what to give it yet because i still don't fully understand the two episodes isn't enough so it's a pass uh and i'll give i will i want to reserve the right to uh at some point uh, like just during one of my other things go, this thing gets a solid this grade. But it definitely is a pass. I will continue watching it because I still don't understand. I think there's, it's just, and, and what's weird is I don't feel it's going too slow. Is it's it, just, is it, is it British? It's not, I'm sorry. And I'm sorry. It, it, it's so not to the 30 second, like... it's, it is. So the name doesn't, is not descriptive at all. It is a, a series <sighs> about, the, well, okay, well, I haven't figured that out yet, but okay, uh, gotcha. it was a series about the aftermath uh, uh New Orleans. Oh, you just cut out, Todd. Oh, no. We lost you, buddy. Last thing we heard was aftermath. So uh, while Todd's getting it together, uh, Todd and Corey are figuring out what's going on. Um, do you want me to context do it? Oh, 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 hold on. We just, you just came back. Todd, you cut out for about 15 seconds. So, so it's not, it's not British, right? Okay. Corey disconnect. Yeah. yeah he's, disconnect he's and try, try and connect. Okay. So we're going to move on to Krabby Krabby. Uh, looks like you had free solo, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Who gave you that? Corey. Corey gave you free solo. What's going on with that? So, um, <clears throat> so 30 second quick synopsis mm-hmm. is, First of all, free solo. When you gave it to me, I was thinking it's gonna be something about Han Solo. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was like, oh, it's gonna be a documentary, something about Star Wars. This is fantastic. So, um, but free solo for those that don't know what that is, that's uh, mountain climbing without cables. So gotcha. Basically, craziest fucking thing ever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> first, I want to talk about the actual show and documentary. Very good. Uh, Photos and the video were great areas that I love to see. Um, and then something, I, I don't think you really know this, but maybe you do and or it was just a, a good hit on your part. So my degree is in social psychology. Okay. So um, I am not, first of all, number one, um, anybody that's mountain climbing, skydiving, any extreme, you know, I got to get a rush. Okay. Not that guy. Not only that guy, I feel sad for that person. <laughs> no, serious. I know we're laughing, but I mean serious because I, know, I, 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 I see where you're going with this because I, I, I agree with you definitely. Because I know if somebody's doing that, it's just like a drug addict. Sure. Um, there's reasons because of that. There's something that they're escaping or there's something that they're not, um, they haven't dealt with in their life, psych- you know, from a psychological st- standpoint. And that for thrill seekers, are you saying that? So I'm back on for thrill seekers, are you saying? or Yes. Yes, thrill seekers, and, and I was just saying that. Uh, so, what was great about this documentary is, so for me, <clears throat> getting that background of how I look at things like that, sure, um, it got in depth about his background. Now, it wasn't coming from the point of view that I'm coming from, but it laid it out there for me to be able to sit there and think about oh this discover is why, it this is why he's there this is why he's that so that so. you're saying that adrenaline dump is an escape yeah oh absolutely okay yeah yeah it's be, it, because you can't get so in their minds is the same thing with a drug addict is life sucks so bad i can't get uh any kind of rush from it i need to find something that will give me the rush instead mm-hmm. of life giving you the rush makes perfect sense you know um, so, so anyways, and I forgot to say, this is, it was, I can't remember exactly what the, was it El, El Capito? What was the name of the? El Capitan. El Capitan, right. Yeah. So cool thing was, this is the first time this guy, first person ever to climb it, um, free solo. Uh, so that's what it was all about. That's what, first of all, I forgot to mention that. 
Um, but it did a really, really good job on getting in depth. He had a relationship that was happening during it. Um, he talked about his past, brought his mother into it, and his father, his father who, who was who had uh, um, died when he was 19, which was, for, for me, obviously, knowing there's a big part of where he's at. Um, but, yeah, it was really, really interesting. Um, and, again, I love that area just from a, just from a video standpoint, them just showing some of the shots. You know, mm-hmm. it was, oh, it, it, it was gorgeous. It, you know, it was it was basically uh, to me like almost like a Nat Geo shot. Yeah, yeah, that's what I felt like. I felt like I was watching a Nat Geo flick with, uh, you know, a storyline. Yes, a, a lot, so. a lot of mm-hmm. uh, high high def mm-hmm. uh, visuals and and what. So some of the things that came to my mind during watching this, like the what the cameraman had to do. Yeah, to yeah, get yeah. some of the shots. Yeah, of and there, and there's a follow up that you can. I, I will. I want to sign it to you, but. If you if you're that interested in it, there's yeah, yeah. a follow that you can actually go on. I think it's on YouTube, and it shows you what the camera guys were doing in order to get the shots they were getting. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I could but see that. dude, the, the fact that he he climbed this this mountain, and Nick, we're not talking we're not talking, uh, we're talking like actual rock climbing. Not Why is it Nick only? Hmm? What's that? Why is that only directed at Nick? Yeah, and why would you say... I don't know if you're back on yet, sorry. Why would you say actual rock climbing, not Mount Everest? Like, Mount Everest was the bunny hill? <laughs> like, <laughs> in, 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 this, in this guy's world, yes, Mount Everest was a bunny hill. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, dude, uh, this was... This not was, a bunny hill, but well, just... Isn't just Mount Everest, Everest yeah. like the most trying thing any climber can ever do? This is more, but they're two different things. If, if it and, was this like, uh, this, like d- vertical face rock climbing? Climbing is yeah. more vertical face. Yeah, gotcha. yeah, totally. Yeah, vertical. Vertical face know. sometimes, uh, little juts coming out. That yeah, he was, yeah. Like you have to swing yeah. out to he, grab. He would, on, yeah. he would actually make jumps too, and it it documents him and his his friend that he took up. Uh, they routed the path and did it while attached, and even attached. I'm glad you mentioned that, Corey, because that was the other thing I found interesting what we were kind of talking about off camera here, too, was I really found, you know, being a guy that, and I know I joked about it, but I really do believe in the five Ps, proper planning prevents poor performance. Sure. It was also interesting to see he mapped out. And oh, they, and how they, they down. They, how they, um, you know, they scouted and had it squared away and the really practice that they took to get to it. That was really interesting, too. Um but I will also say, you know, there's a piece of it that uh, also makes me sad because I I I feel sad. I can't stand whether it be a thrill seeker or a drug addict or an alcoholic or somebody um, that can't get the thrill out of life and what life has for you and just in its every day. Um, I always feel sad about that, you know, because I want to. Literally, that's they're the people that I want to reach out to and just yeah. And, and but as as a slight as a as a, slight, as a, as a which, slight. As a slight counterpoint, though, I'd point out this. I mean, ultimately, and again, I, I didn't see this, see this show, and I don't know his mental state, but there are some people who are thrill seekers because, and actually I heard the most perfect phrase the other day. People say you only live once. It's, it's actually the, the reverse of that, right? And so you only you only die once. Uh, and quite honestly, like for me, I, and again, it's, I'm glad you mentioned it. If he's practicing, 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 that's kind of – you wouldn't practice if you were just a thrill seeker you got wanting to see if you could do something crazy and, and survive. You wouldn't like lay it out. And I think that for, for me, I love anything that go will go fast. I, I want to see how fast it'll go and see how good I can ride it. And so I'm not a thrill seeker running away, but I do. And I, I 100% get in a drilling rush from speed. And so anything that I can go fast in or do and even like, so that, cause it's funny. I, I went white water rafting at on the Galley river. One of the, most challenging and dangerous rivers in the in the world. Been there. Uh, yeah. and, and I did it once, and I'm like, I'm super glad I did it because I can say, hey, I I I, I uh, white water rafted the golly. Would I do it again? Nope, because I'm a thrill seeker in some ways, and I, but in other ways, I'm like, yeah, I think I have a I have a need for speed, and that's one of the fastest rapids you can go down, uh, plus a 12 foot drop or whatever it is off a freaking uh, waterfall <laughs> in a kayak with a bunch of other people. So I think y- until you're in somebody else's head, and I'm not trying to criticize, but I'm like, I, I-, I want to see, th- I want to see this documentary because there, I think there's a slight counter though. If you're preparing or just doing dumb shit, like I think parkour dudes who are jumping over buildings and have never done it before and proven that they can go 19 feet or whatever. Yeah. That there's something wrong with them and they're trying to cheat death. Yeah, I guess. Well, and let me clarify it as um, 
it, death could be imminent in a very possible outcome of whatever you're doing. I mean, I don't care if you're prepared for it or not. Um, there, I guess when I say thrill seeking, that's what I mean. I'm talking about death being imminent. Of it. I'm going to, I'm going to drop a, this is going to be, this, you know, this is, this is coming from a good place. Shit. Death is eminent for me. Every time I drive down a highway. Yeah. This is going to be a lot. <laughs> uh, seriously. We can talk off. off <laughs> I'm, just kidding. Okay, no, I'm so, with you. I'm so, with so, you. Uh, let so anyway, let me just say this. Do you like it? So I was just about to give it a great. Yeah. 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 So I would, I would give it an A. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Great. So, that's right. that's yeah, fantastic. I give it an eight. Yeah, it was. Thanks to Todd Dillon yeah. for setting the grading uh, process. Yeah, that's, the, that's how I know how to express kind of how I feel about a thing. Yeah, no, that's. Yeah, I'm fantastic. a hard grader though. That's fantastic. So we got an A from Krabby. That's nice. That's great. That's great. Um, yeah. Todd finish off what he was. He was. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna we're yeah, gonna move yeah. we're, gonna, we're gonna move back to Todd. Um, aside from the uh, the Rottweilers barking in the junkyard behind him. Um, yep. If you could go ahead and finish finish yours off, because we Tremé. Got yes, left. yep. So yeah, I don't know what everybody caught. I gave it a solid. I gave it a solid pass. I'm gonna continue what was to watch. The movie? Tremé. Okay. And it is it, it's a series. It's a series uh, about the aftermath of Katrina, uh, and several different uh, life paths, uh, especially geared around music, which I'm, I'm again I'm intrigued. And it's an A list, uh, in my opinion, of actors because a lot of people from The Wire, John Goodman. A lot of other people that you recognize, solidly done, and I and and what I'm loving about it is I think when it finally clicks in, I think it's going to get a good grade, mainly because it's it's smartly written. It is not written at a fifth grade level, and that's why I think it's hard to understand, not just because of the accents, but because of the message that you're trying to put forth. Yeah. So I'm super excited about it. I can't give it a grade yet, but it's definitely a pass. And at some point when I'm finished watching, at least uh, when it when it, like the, when the light clicks on, I'll come back and give it a grade. But I'm liking it. Can I tell you, excellent observation. Um, I kind of put that out there because I, I kind of held back a little bit when I put that out there. Is that I knew you were a Wire fan. Yeah. So the writer is George Pelicanos that wrote The Wire. So that's why uh, those Wire people are in it. Um, and, uh, yeah, so same guy. Um, when I first started watching it, I was curious because Pelicanos wrote The Wire so well because he's from, he's a Greek from Maryland, from Baltimore. Ah, okay. You know what I mean? From okay. Baltimore. Yep. So I knew that was, and I spent a lot of time out there. I spent probably eight years. Um, so when Treme first came on, <clears throat> I was really interested to see how he did as far as doing his research about writing in another area. So, so yeah, so good heads up on your part and looking at, and, and I will also know, I don't know if you know this or not, but the, uh, oh, I can't think of his name, but the guy that played uh, Bunk. Bunk. Bunk, yeah. He's from New Orleans. So that's why uh-huh. he wanted to be in that. Ah, yeah, he's a huge New Orleans guy. Yeah, uh, that he fits in perfect. Like I said, the, you, I'm like you can tell the the craft is being done very very well. Yeah, it's and like I said, I don't. It's complex, and I'm like I can't figure out if like is he being complex to be a show off? And so I'm waiting for the payoff. That's why I, I can't give it a, a grade, but it's it's and if a grade is, it's definitely passing because I'm going to keep watching it. Right, right. So Todd, you're gonna you're gonna let us know. Uh, when you finally figure out a grade for that. Yep, uh, but people should, I, I would say people should watch it because on a positive note, they don't have to wait for me to give it the <laughs> yeah, grade. But so far, so good, huh? Yep, yep. Hold on, let me exhale. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like that exhale was, so, was from uh, all the bacon, all the pork butt, uh-oh. all the pork belly, <laughs> like everything. There's so much exhale into that exhale. I'm just so happy I just got a solid weight. Todd gave it a solid weight. Mine's usually a um, a solid immediate D or C. No, no, no. It's Gumtow's on my is on my. He and I aren't on the same page. So, so, By far, my favorite is the solid C minus. So when he says that something is solidly less than average. So we'll say we'll say this uh, next uh, is is going to be a minute. Um, it's Corey and Corey. You had Ballers and the Bill Murray Experience. And a little backstory on that. Did first of all, did you watch them both? I did. Okay. I did. So the backstory on that was, um, if you haven't listened, Corey gave me the Bill Murray experience instead of the Bill Murray stories, um, and I watched it, and it was absolutely horrible. And <laughs> and he somehow slipped the tongue enough to uh, say the complete wrong documentary, like very eloquently. Uh, so regardless of that, 
um, Corey Ballers and Bill Murray experience. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to start with you. Um, because yes, that, that was definitely slip of the tongue and who would have known there would have been two documentaries out there <laughs> covering the exact same topic that you could su- su- name both such a subtle topic uh, as Bill Murray that these people were seeking experiences with him. So yes, I did watch it and I apologize again. <laughs> <laughs> I am sincerely sorry that I did slip up on that one. Thanks that's, buddy. That's my, that was my bad. So it must be um, really bad. It, dude, it's it's a rough watch. <laughs> thank, thank God the the girl that the uh, the documentarian that she's a writer and all this other shit. Like, thank God she was at least a looker a little bit. Oh yeah, she was. And uh, you know, she was annoying as fuck. But she was. But her, <laughs> yeah, her voice and, and like, how she discussed everything and, and talked was not. Uh, it was balloons. It was a little rough. Balloons. And yeah, and and the story was very rough too. So again, I, that's where I'll leave that. At. I do apologize. I, <laughs> yeah. I did. I did watch myself. Would you recommend from, it? Yeah, man, I love weird documentaries. I mean, you really got to. You really got to want something. You really got to shit the bed sounds, for you. Sounds to like a no. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't recommend it to just anyone. Yeah. Uh, so, what like, were your like true like under the skin thoughts like? Like if you, I mean, not knowing what you know about my, my review, like, what well, what are your thoughts on it? She, she went too far. Um, the Stalker ass. Ex- the extent that she went to, like it was actually consuming something in her actual mind. Like it, it was no longer an actual documentary. It was so far gone in her mind that it became an obsession and something that she was trying to force. And clearly that got back to, to Bill that it, all the interactions she has in the documentary, you can clearly tell that that happened. That word got out big time that like, Hey, this, this lady's out there and like, we don't know what she's going to do. Like, we don't know what her, if she has a a ulterior motive, you know what the case might be. And her, yeah, her friends end up not hanging out with her anymore. She loses a a boyfriend during all of it. My fiance, actually, I like my, my thought process was this dude. If it's not readily apparent, that you've lost a relationship with a prospective fiance. You've had three or four girlfriends that you've lost based on your hunt for quote unquote, Bill Murray, your hunt for him. And I feel like at the end of this documentary, like all throughout, she felt that the Bill Murray experience, getting a Bill Murray experience was going to fix everything in her life. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, she definitely became psychotic about it. And and that it was actually sad to see. Uh, she had the, issues. The extent she was willing to go to, to, to try to force that. And the documentary should have been that the last 45 seconds where she was like, yeah, I realize now like a Bill Murray experience is just that you don't force it. Why, so, why would you have released that? I mean, yeah, yeah, I dude again, it was sad. She cried throughout the whole thing, which was annoying as fuck. I said, thank God she was a looker. That's all I can say about, yeah. about that. So, again, <laughs> I apologize. I'm going to move on to, to what Todd assigned ballers. me. Uh, Todd, you assigned me ballers on uh, HBO. Um, I don't know, man. How do I start this? Well, here's how I'm going to start it. Hang on. Let me. Oh, he's standing up and yeah. clapping, Todd. <laughs> standing up and yeah. clapping. Yeah. <laughs> That takes a lot of energy for Corey Sussman. He doesn't move that quick. Though. It was weird, though. It didn't look natural. It it's was not. Very <laughs> it is I, was wor- I was worried. I was worried. He doesn't move in those motions normally. Dude, it has everything. It's a, it's a series. <laughs> uh, it's, not, it's not just a movie, which I thought it originally was. Uh, I'm already on season two, I think episode three. Uh, I've become obsessed with it. The, the I love it. The second I turned it on and the second I started watching it, I don't know how, uh, when I found out, I would escape you. Dude. Yeah. It's, it was 2015 to 2019. (laughs) How I've never heard about until now in fucking 2021. I have no clue, but it has everything. It has everything. Oh, it's good shit. I wasn't sure how you were going to react. I wasn't sure if it was. I I wasn't sure either. I wasn't sure either. Yeah. Drugs, (laughs) boobs, (laughs) <laughs> it's well written it's and let me backtrack i should have known it would have been fucking right up your alley <laughs> it's it's insanely well written it, the 
it's funny. It's got uh, sides to it that uh, are just so deep. And there's angry. real, there's realness in it. There, there, it it's, it's so well written. There are good lessons through all the craziness and over the topness. There's good stuff. There's real intellectual meat in a really in that show. Oh God, yeah. It, it, again, it, it's. <laughs> The importance of actually planning for your after your playing career, the, and, and 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 how you can get freaking ganked for lack of a better term. It's just it, it does it has everything. I love it. I love it. Oh, I'm glad, and I'm glad that you love it. it. You know, being somebody that frequents Miami a lot because the other half of my family live in there, um, it portrays Miami in that in the scene perfect too. You know, with what they do. So, man, I, I I'm I will be watching. All of it, all the way through season five, uh, it it has overtaken my nightly documentary of Bering Sea Gold. <laughs> has it yeah. overthrown your your nightly uh, just feverish masturbation? No, I just do that. There's so much in it now. I mean, there's nakedness all the time. Oh, so, so I do it at the same time. Yeah, he's still perfect. Is, he still is a terrible masturbator. <laughs> Well, once that grizzly all falls out, then it really... <laughs> yeah, oh God, I wish for the audio listeners we could show the look on Krabby's face right now. <laughs> then you can get a good clean stroke. He's either upset or he's swallowed a bad clam. Oh. <laughs> God, a vision of a giant grizzly tossing salad. <laughs> but uh, and and you know what, Todd? I'm not even going to give a description of it because. Uh, I think anyone out there should watch it, and it, it's it's a great series. So uh, you're lying. Thank you. Fantastic. I'm, I'm lying. You're lying. That it's a great series. No, it is a great series. But you said you weren't going to give it a description. You already gave it a description. You son of a bitch. No further description. <laughs> oh. He's not going <laughs> to give any spoilers. Basically, yeah. is what he's trying to say. So moving right along. Hey, um, hey but before you go, move along. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing pretty good of late. I've been assigning some good shit. Yeah, you have. You've been doing fantastic. <laughs> Apparently, no one can assign you anything fantastic. But, <laughs> but, but you've been giving great stuff. So. Let's move on to the next segment. Right? <laughs> Dylan sucks there, his own dick. Yeah, there, there, there may be a little of a narcissistic streak, but, you know, it's fine. It, I, oh, it, <laughs> I did, and 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 Todd. Before we started, too, I told I told Krabby. I'm like, I couldn't remember if it was from my assignment was from you or from Krabby. And I'm like, if it was great, it was from Todd. I'm like, I'm like, you know, no, I'm like, you know, because I I was like, if it's from Krabby, then I have no problem doing what I just did. But if it was from Todd, I don't know if I want to give him that much to strip his ego. So when I got here, I was like. Crabby, I'm like, did you assign me? He's like, no. I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> okay, that's, that's perfect. Uh, well, I'm that's gonna, I'm perfect. Gonna, I'm going to tell you, gentlemen, this right now. Uh, before I give my review, give you a little bit of time to think about it. Um, the way it's going to go tonight is Corey's going to give Todd a pick. Todd's going to give Nick. Nick's going to give Crabby, and Crabby's going to give Corey. And that's the way it's going to be tonight. So think about that. Yep, um, got it. And I'm going to give my review, uh, so we got a little time to let that marinate. My review is from um, Mr. Dr. Robert Rankin, uh, DDS. Bobby! Uh, gave, me, uh, gave me the godfather um, under duress, or Ooh. tuition, as Corey would say. Ooh. Because uh, he couldn't, he was, he was looking at a long list of things he wanted to give to me, and I'm like... Dude, something off the top of my head, I said, uh, he's like, what do you want? Do you want a cowboy movie? you want this? you want that? I'm like, give me a mafia movie. Oh, man. Mafia. Oh, man. I'm like, well, when I tell you a mafia movie, now you can't think of something. I'm like, so I know I've never seen the fucking Godfather. And Corey's like, no, nah, that's not the way things fucking go. I'm like, I'm not picking it, but I have never seen this. So he's like, all right, buddy, you got the Godfather. So first time, first experience with the godfather um i mean if i if i hated it you should judge me because it was a fantastic movie <laughs> I, I, I thought it was amazing um, marlon brando um i've seen things that he's done in the past the chew in each side of his cheek um acting that he did annoyed me a little bit uh, I know that's his character, 
but it looked like he had a mouthful of cud every time he was fucking talking. Uh, if he had been spitting through the movie, I would have felt a little bit better. But I'm like, why are you talking like this all the time? You know, like he his cheeks were like chipmunks. And it just didn't feel natural. So obviously it was something they were going for at the time. Maybe they stuffed some stuffs just in his, just so you he are, could, you are hurting people's feelings big time. Right that's now, fine. I tell you that much. Dude, he did a fantastic job. There's no doubt about it. I think he won an award. His acting. I'm not talking about his acting. I'm talking no, about the fact that dude, that's dude. That's iconic to the movie. Like that, I understand that. And there's been through every, like movie and TV show I've seen for the last 30 some years, everyone's got their Godfather impression. All four of them. But the reason, no, the reason it's so impressionable is because yeah, stuffing your cheeks and talking is very easy. You know, it, it's, it's an easy impression to do. So, but I, I would like to, I'm not casting lightning bolts down on him. I think he did a fantastic job. I want to know more. I want to know what his thought process and what the director's thought process that went into that character. That's that's what makes me know that it was a great movie because I want to know, like, this isn't something he just spitballed because no, I, I don't think he talks like that in any other movie. So no, I, by any means. I want to know, like, what went into that. You know, what was the thought? You know, was it... This is just something, but I loved the Italian American aspect of it. They deep dove into that. I love the time frame. Um, Al Pacino did a fantastic job. Um, I think you won an award for that. I think maybe. <laughs> okay, first of all, I don't think anybody of substance needs Nick Bader to tell you that Godfather <laughs> was a fucking great movie. So, but at this point in time, that's where we're fucking at. So. It was a great movie. I liked it a lot. Um, I love it. I, I love listening to your perspective because everybody has seen it. Mm -hmm. And to yep. hear somebody. And I never have. Exactly. Yeah, to hear yeah. It I, I agree. 2021, you know what I mean? And you never. give. That's, I, I think it's awesome. Just like to listen to that. I, I, I would love I, to. I actually got really bummed out, uh, and this will make a lot of people laugh, but I had to. I'm like, there's no way this dude's still alive, Marlon Brando. And, of course, I Googled it, and I'm like, no, nope. died, like, in 2005 or some shit, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But I but I did the same with, uh, you know, Bob gave me a lot of uh, Westerns, you know, and there are all these actors that you're, like, are kind of household names that you've heard of, but you don't know anything about them, you know. And uh, when I, I actually took the time, which you know it must have been a good movie because I actually took the time to watch the credits, and look at nice. the actors, and I'm like, nice. Ooh, oh, I know them. I've heard of them. I've heard of them. Like, I think my grandma's talked about that person before, you know. And uh, it was super cool. I would, I would really love to see, and maybe it's out there, and I'm just an idiot, but I would love to see like a documentary on like the making of the movie, like maybe some interviews with the the actors. But I don't know that that's ever been done before. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of material about that. That that movie is that iconic. I think I, I think it's awesome. Even though I poked fun, I'm like, oh, you won an award for that. I, I, my poking fun is just that's what's awesome about that movie. That, that I talk about the wire dudes being <laughs> iconic. That's the that is a who's who of like legit uh, artists who know who are really good at their craft with a really really good script who take it to a whole nother level and and it's. And what I love is you've now proven that it's not the time period stuff that you don't like. Like uh, when you saw the the uh, Caddyshack and you're like, ah, it's too dated. It doesn't work. Uh, so I, I love it. I'm, I'm super excited that you liked it. This no, much. it doesn't. It doesn't. There's certain movies that don't translate. Yep. They're hokey. Um, right. And, 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 yeah. and surround themselves with. But the, that's my point. It's, it's interesting to hear. Like when I heard you give that review about that. And again, it was interesting because somebody like me and Todd, I'm sure too, um, you know, we saw it in the 80s, right? Yeah. Yep. Through now. And so I could watch it tomorrow and laugh my ass off, right? <laughs> yeah. But had I not saw it until 40 years later, right now, you know, after the comedy that I've seen, let's say for the last 
10, yeah. 15 years. Right. It doesn't translate. Yep. Well, yeah. It's yep. interesting. I've, yeah. I've, so I've got, but so, Hey, don't screw it up though. I have Nick tonight. So I'm actually, I'm actually going to test the waters again, by the way. I'm going to take, I'm a, I'm a thrill seeker. I'm going to test the waters. Taking your socks and shoes off right now. And just so you can uh, get in the water. I like it. Todd. <laughs> Those little dark piggies. <laughs> I, I, I have, uh, I've said to my nieces and nephews before, like, um, you know, something iconic of my time was Jurassic park. You know, it was huge. And uh, it was like the Goonies of the 80s, you know, uh, of the 90s. And uh, and I'm like, oh, dude, well, you've seen Jurassic Park, right? And they're like, no. And I feel like if you were to watch it for the first time now, you'd be like, this is kind of cheesy probably. But at the time, like, I, I feel like Jurassic Park, like, blows, like, even Jurassic Park 3 out of the water because it was the time where they actually painted – and used real life special effects and instead of CGI and now everything's animated and it almost looks more fake now than it looked back in the day like because they spent so much money you you know on animatronics and all that other shit so you were actually filming something physical right i i, I see where you're coming from with that um but i i don't know. I, again too like with, with how Caddyshack, Caddyshack translated to you was yeah, not at way, all. Yeah, having, it, but I, I I didn't see it back when you guys saw it. But I, but coming up with like kind of in the air and also doing that myself, like so caddying, uh, it, it made it funny. Oh, even better. Well, because you had an experience, right? That's part of it. Had well, I, had I not had any experience or didn't like golf yeah. as someone else, totally. I, I know doesn't like. Then yeah, I might be like, yeah, I, I don't really like this because I, I don't have any connection to it okay so before new assignments because we got to wrap some things up real quick the only thing i want to say is uh cory thank you because after uh the bill murray stories i probably really would have appreciated caddyshack a lot more if i watched it <laughs> after the fact than before yeah um because i respect the hell out of bill murray now um so we'll start out with uh with cory giving todd a pick Todd, you have uh, unbanned on Hulu. Uh, unbanned? Yep. U n b a n d. Nope. U n b a n n e d. Okay. Okay. Unbanned. Okay. And the title is nothing along the lines of what I expected it to be, so I hope it shocks you as well. Cool. I'm ready. Is it a documentary? Come on, buddy. Of course it is. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> okay, Todd, you got me. Yeah. So, again, I am 100% taking a big risk here. Uh, but, I, I, I'm again, I'm a throw seeker. So, stripes. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. You are taking a risk. Where is it available? On Hulu or Netflix. Okay. Based on his update tonight, I, I, I have a coin that's, flip. <laughs> that, that's, that, that was that was a solid pick on as far as the update tonight. I, I think I think you might have found that perfect perfect line of not too much slapstick and a perfect amount of yeah. We'll see. I'm ex- kind of, like I, I said, I'm a thrill seeker. I, I this is definitely a pass fail. I'm, and again, I've been riding such a high. I've been. Don't want such gems. I'm willing. Wow. I'm willing to risk. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly why I didn't want to give Todd. I was hoping that Crabby was the one that gave me that. <laughs> God damn it! Okay, Crabby. Crabby, have you seen the outpost? No. Ooh. The outpost. The outpost. <clears throat> we all have. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say that. That is. That's a modern day gotta see Nick that I love it that that's like you're like you seen this and then when people are like no because yeah. because I I'm like I was so blown away by it that yeah. I'm like I I want to find I know someone out there has not seen this you know yep no it's awesome you got your no, phone I, on I, right there do I what you got your phone on you yeah text it to me will you will do thank you I got him okay thanks yeah somebody sent it to me because my phone's up hanging up there. Krabby what do you got for Corey buddy. I thought I had something, and then I just thought about it. I'm like, shit, it's got to be free, right? And I'm not sure if this thing. No, that's not true. 
Okay. The the no. ca- the caveat is if it's paid, and he hates it, you got to give him the four bucks for running okay. it. Yeah. Have you seen Apocalypse Now yet? Yes. Oh. Mm. Have you seen Nine Perfect Strangers on Hulu? Yep. Ooh. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Bill Bradsky was a son of a bitch. <laughs> So if you want to think about it, we can do a quick uh, pick of the week. Think about it. Yeah, we'll yeah do... I'm gonna need to come back. Yeah, was... yeah, come come back to it. So, uh, oh, the only... oh, nope, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, Sorry. Here. Uh, Netflix. Have you seen Dead to Me? Uh, it's a series. Yes. With a... <laughs> My dogs are out. Jesus Christ! Dude, you have wolves in your house, Todd? No. Yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah. I do. <laughs> I would say, yeah, we're Todd. You're muted for a second because of all the uh, creepy Halloween wolves. Wait, (laughs) hold on. Maybe we want that in the background. (laughs) (laughs) How about the Queen's Gambit? No. Okay, Queen's Gambit on Netflix. It's a uh, six-part, one-time-only series. You know, so it's not. I've I've seen it on there. I've just never never clicked on it. Okay. So Todd's got uh, Unbanned, I Have Stripes, Crabby has the Outpost, Corey has Queen's Gambit. Nice. Uh, So Queen's Gambit is uh, an hour, so you got to do at least two of them, right? Yep, absolutely. I can make that happen, no problem. Corey, are we over time? You know, without Bob here, man, it's kind of nice to not know what time is. (laughs) It's suspended. (laughs) When yeah, Bob's time, not here, time is suspended. We, we could go. We you could go. do a lot worse than Bob Rankin. I'll tell you that, buddy. It can all be edited out, right? Yeah, we, we, we can all go for the next four hours and have. Uh, yeah, but what is the actual time we're looking at? Uh, yeah, we're we're over time. We're over time. So the only reason behind uh, not continuing is I'll tell you anything. I mean, at this point, it's uh, we're just circling the drain. But anything past two hours when I go in to uh, make any sound clips, um, it won't let me do anything with it. It won't let me touch it. It grays out the file. Um, it uses our podcast file, like, number. Um, so are you still yammering? But it won't let us. Sorry, hold on. We're having trouble hearing you, Todd. Um, hold on. Which one is his? Okay, there we go. Uh, we've lost Todd. I'm sorry. He's got his mouth full. He's got his mouth full right now. But, yeah, so I guess it doesn't matter after this point, but um, why don't we um, uh, in, in keep with not um, being a slave to anyone's time clock, we'll, we'll do a pick of the week and we'll wrap it up because at this point it really doesn't matter. Um, so I can also break down the audio, audio files and send them to you as well. So. That's cool too. So for uh, we're going to do a little bit of pick of the week. Um, we don't have... That one we do not. We don't have any audio for that. That's fine. I'm not going to give Bob the pleasure of doing something. <laughs> so, uh, it's your pick of the week. Yeah, really. <laughs> Krabby, what's your pick of the week, buddy? Uh, actually, the Pumpkin Nitro that I gave you. Oh, great yeah. pick, dude. So, like I said, it was uh, it's Southern Tier Pumpkin. It's been my favorite pumpkin beer um, because it's not sweet. It's typically got spice to it. Um, and then they added this nitro thing this year, uh, which is the first time they've done that. It's got a high alcohol content. Now, what's different this year is it's actually a little bit creamier and smooth than um, spicy. Yeah, that's the the widget inside. Yep. Yep. So, uh, yeah. So that's my pick of the week. Yep. Uh, for those that um, aren't familiar with nitro beers, um, a lot of the 16-ounce Guinness, um, they offer a lot of uh, nitro cold brews at coffee shops and things like that. Basically, they shoot. Um, they, Sorry. They, Sorry. Uh, they wake up Frankenstein from the dead. Uh, <laughs> no, they, they shoot uh, the nitro gas into it. And um, with with cans like, like these nitro cans, um, they have a widget in the bottom that has uh, two little fins, like opposite end fins on it. And the second that you break that seal, it spins and releases this gas, which causes like a foamy head on the beer or coffee or whatever you might be drinking. So it gives it like a kind of that creamy milk stout at the top. And uh, it's really good. It really kind of smooths it out. Um, so 
fantastic pick because um, I'm drinking it now, and that's that's awesome. Corey, what is yours, buddy? I'm going to go with the Link Dream Memory Foam Replacement Ear Tips. Uh, as you guys know, we do a podcast every week, and I have bought new headphones in the past, new different earphones, trying to get the, some of the best audio. Uh, and what I have found out, these the ear tips they give you with anything you buy, uh, whether it be JBL, uh, any of the big names, they're just plastic, uh, rubbery kind of ear tips. And the other day I, I saw a post on Instagram that this guy had with a similar pair of, of uh, in-ear audio monitors to mine, mm-hmm. and he had these foam memory memory foam ear tips. I'm like, holy shit. I'm like, that's a great idea. So went on Amazon, found a pair. Uh, you actually get uh, six, uh, six, six pairs of them all different sizes, and two sets of each. So when you put them in, rather than that just kind of plasticky feeling going into your ear, <laughs> uh, you, you get the, it's an actual memory foam that expands and forms to the inside of your ear to lock out any other sound uh, or any other um, outside noise that you might have and, and becomes like a kind of a true uh, cancellation uh, headphone. You can get that on Amazon? Yes. Oh, dude! They, I I got I have them on these, and then I also have them on the, the ones I use at work, and they're, they're fantastic, comfortable as can be. Uh, and like I said, they form right to the inside ear. Take them out. Uh, absolutely amazing. And the searchable name was what on Amazon? Link Dream, uh, memory foam replacement ear tips. Dude, that's awesome! I love anything memory foam. Todd, pick of the week, brother. We'll talk after. Todd. Okay. Ty, oh. Sorry, I muted, I muted myself because the dogs were <laughs> serenading me. I was going to say smooth my balls, but you know what I'm going to say? Because the with the with going with the ha- Halloween theme, I'm going with my uh, New Belgium Atomic Pumpkin, baby. Ooh, nice. You guys and your pumpkin beers today. Jesus. I hate all things pumpkin. This is a badass beer. New Belgium Brewing Company. Is that the one with the... <laughs> Uh, green and orange. Fat the green and orange, like crazy pumpkin on the front of it. No, 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 no. It's got. A, can you if you can see the camera? I'll put it up for. It's got. Yeah, a, that, it's, it's gonna be like a art, second delay, but I'll look at it in a little bit. The artwork is amazing. So yeah, I had an Ichabod pumpkin beer, and I had uh, the original pumpkin, which was pretty good. And uh, I want to say I've had that one, but I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, awesome. Definitely have to try it if I haven't. Um, awesome. So, uh, my pick of the week is the smile direct club so far. Um, it's just at the beginning stages of it. Um, basically it's a different, uh, alternative to Invisalign. Um, I had braces like growing up. I had them for six arduous years, cost my parents upwards of maybe 20 bucks or 20, 20 bucks, bucks. $20,000. Like (laughs) your parents got off easy. Yeah. They got off with a break, huh? (laughs) 20 grand. Um, and, uh, between the follow-up care that, uh, it was hard to, to maintain going back for retainers and losing them and then breaking. And then they want money up front. I mean, there was no like, Oh yeah, we guarantee this if you need an updated one, you know. But for people that have had braces, you have to you have to wear that like all the time and it just keeps things in check. And it was something um that I attempted to do three or four times with retainers, but it just never happened. So from about 18 to 38, uh you know, there were no retainers. So uh, my teeth had moved in the middle a little bit and off to the right. Um something that drove me crazy um, because at one point I had perfect teeth and that bothered me. So I did smile direct. They're 50% cheaper than Invisalign that your dentist will try and pedal to you. Um, it, dude, it's been fantastic so far. They literally for, for 18 bucks, they send you a whole kit to your house, two different kinds of moldable clay. You make four different forms. You bite down on it put it in the mail it's automatically postmarked and everything gets sent back uh within four weeks um i think it ends up being around 
2800 bucks, um, and it takes four to six months to get you back to where you're supposed to be. And uh, they send you a nice huge box. It comes with a file to file down any of the forms that maybe don't fit right. It comes with like 15 different, you get one form a week for those four to eight months or whatever it may be. Um, it's super fast. You put them in, no one can see them, just like Invisalign. Uh, it comes with like lip balm and and all this crazy stuff, but they also, like literally everything I was going through, they thought of. Because I'm like, why is there this weird egg of lip balm in this case? And then on like the second day, because you have this uncomfortable thing in your mouth, you're like licking your lips. And my lips were dry, and I'm like, Oh, now you made me lick my lips. Maybe that's maybe that's why. <laughs> it's and contagious, then, like yawning. And I'm like, why is there a nail file in here? And then I'm like, oh, on like the third day, I felt like I was having a canker sore. And they're like, yep, you need to file that shit down to make it fit right, you know. So, so everything kind of comes with you, and it's it's great. And uh, the coolest part about it is that they say your smile's guaranteed for life. If anything is to change, retainer wise or um, any kind of insert that they need to put in, you're guaranteed. So Smile Direct Club, I highly highly recommend it. Nice. All right. Yeah. But that's all I have. Um, and for... That's a... You what? A nice long episode. Oh, Episode dude. 143. Episode 143 in the book. Shazam. One of the longest episodes in quite some time. And... Uh, I think we're just going to we're going to have to end it there. Sounds good, buddy. Until Booyah. Then. This is Nick, Corey, James Krabby Pappas, and Todd Vincent Osborne Dillon saying goodnight for episode 143. We'll see you guys. Mm-hmm.